Bob, if you'll look at that for just a minute, I'll pass it around to everybody else. Nick Baker? Is Nick Baker here? Good, Nick. We'll be using you in just a second. Nick Baker, if you come up here for me. Okay. Nick Baker is a student at the high school. He is also into uh, uh, civics, um, and he's going into the ministry. Nick, you'd lead us in prayer, please. All right. Well, I'm just reminded how you know the Bible says that a righteous man's steps are ordered of the Lord, and that's just what I want to pray that God would order everything here tonight and, and do His will. Father God, thank you that, that you are a loving God, you're a gracious God, and a merciful and compassionate God. I thank you for all that you've done for us, for all the blessings that you've given us in this county, Lord God. I thank you that you took the time to send your son to die for us, Lord God, so that we could be here, so that we could be forgiven, Lord. Lord, I ask that you will order our steps tonight. You said that a righteous man's steps are ordered of the Lord. And I'm reminded how David prayed that you would order his steps because your order is perfect, Lord God. Let what happens here tonight not be our will, but be your will done, Lord God, among us. And let your kingdom come here in Cannon County, Lord God, as you said you taught us to pray through your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for everything you're going to do for us. We thank you all for all that you have done for us, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Austin Jennings will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Will you face the flag and repeat with me the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag of the representative of our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May I say just one thing about that pledge? We, we pause when we say one nation, and then we say under, it's one nation under God. It's, yes. it's not one nation, I wonder if it's under God. It's one nation under God. Let's take that pause out there. I agree. Thank you very much, both of you. And thank you for the audience for participating. All right, Bobby, if you'd call the roll, please. Here. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Here. 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 Okay, you y'all have got a copy, and I've decided tonight that I am going to make a copy of the the uh, um, summary of the commission. Every meeting, um, I'll be putting it in the newspaper to let the people see what we've done as a commission. So you have been able to read it. Is there anything that you need to remark about? Anything that needs to be changed? Uh, if Did I make a mistake? As far uh, as the minutes? Pardon me? The minutes. On the minutes, yeah. Uh, what did I say? Uh, yeah, I think you said minutes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's the part with uh, Mr. Dobson presented his uh, part would I like to be struck from the thing. He was here under, without permission, with the election commission. It should be struck from the minutes. The what should? The, with Mr. Dobson, where he come here before us oh. and presented his matter. He didn't have permission from the election commission. It shouldn't be in the minutes. Okay, we so we should take that out? I think so. Um, well, either that, either that or add that he didn't have their permission. Well, it was debatable. He said he did have it, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He was told, he was told last did. night that he, was not, that he did not have permission to be right. here. That was told me by the chair also. I heard both sides. You know, both of them. Well, I was at the meeting last night myself, and they did not give him permission to come. What is the pleasure of the board? You know, I think that personally, I think everything should stay in there that's in there because this is a record, uh, yeah. historical record. If we're going to do anything, we should amend them to reflect that he didn't have the. Uh, 
permission of his board to, to make yeah. that call. You're request. not going to take care of that. Okay. All right. Um, With that amendment, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, let me announce to this. We, I am changing the order just a little bit because I've got to have some people come in and, and to make a little small presentation because this meeting right here has all the makings of being a long one. So I'm going to have uh, Connie Rigsby, if you would come up, please. Connie Rigsby from the Senior Center. She has a, uh, wants to address the commission. Um. Our board were recently getting ready to do some um, improvements there at the center by putting on a vestibule to kind of help with our heating and the air. And as we were working through the process of starting to get bids, one of the questions was, uh, did we have a lease for the facility? And when we as a board kind of went through our file, uh, we had a letter. Uh, was all really we actually had, and so I had requested that uh, to see if there was something that was already formally made. Um, the comments that we had from the board was that we had a 99-year lease, but we didn't, as a group, have something in our in our in our files. Um, the the only forms that we had was pretty much from uh, past Harold Patrick uh, County Executive that there was a lease from 1992 to 2002. Um, but uh, we had asked if they would actually look for things. Okay. And uh, we had a couple of folks that were looking for us to see if they could find something. But we, um, is this from? I got it back to folder. So okay. So we've been requesting them to kind of look. I don't know if this may be something that y'all want to look at. Um, but this form shows that the initial term of the lease shall be for a period of 10 years, commencing with the date of execution. Upon the expiration of a 10-year term, the lease shall continue until terminated by either the landlord or the tenant by giving at least a 90 days written notice to the other or each other of the termination. Lease premises for the Senior Citizen Center. Um, and looking at the date on this, this kind of coincides with that. This was done in 78. 79, I'm sorry. 79. So we're, we're kind of, I think this may, may be something we just need to have maybe cleared or um, where we have a little bit more guidance and something that we have on hand. When you're trying to, uh, what you're saying is that on the, uh, where you want to uh, make some more additions and stuff like that, the people that are doing it require that you have a lease or else they won't do it. Because you're what, some. borrowing money? Well, we, we, you know, at this project we won't be borrowing money, but this will be a project, I guess, for their insurance that they're doing something on a property that is ours or being used right, by us. Right, right. Well, I can certainly see that you'd hate to get everything going, then all of a sudden the county kicks you out, right? I don't yeah, see I don't see that happening. So, uh, what is your recommendation, Connie? Um, what we have been told, and kind of per this guidelines, I mean, it really, I mean, to me, it's still unclear, and I'm not a legal jargon, but um, we would like for uh, what we had been talking about the 99 year lease for the Senior Citizen Center, um, if that's possible, if that's something that the, you know this group would like to to recommend or to uphold, uh, just where it's kind of all out and maybe we have some type of documentation in this file other than a letter that states dates that seem to be off. 99 years, long time. I, mean, it doesn't have anything to do. I think we'll have seniors at least that long, won't yeah. you? <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Mike, do you have a, a, a contract that's already it, that's it there it was uh, signed in 78 or 9 for 10 years and then it's good from now on unless one of the two parties gives a 90 day notice so she does have a lease it's not a very good one but she does have a lease well then 
we probably need to have her, but she needs a good lease. Uh, we could terminate the lease upon 90 days notice to her, or not necessarily to her, but the senior center, and, and they could terminate the lease upon a 90 day notice to the county. And that's good from now on until one of the two parties terminate. Otherwise, it continues to renew year after year. Is that something that we have to come back and? No. I take. I, once you take the, take what you've got there, okay. what Mike gave you, and see if that suffices with the with your contract. They, they faxed me that, and that's a bad copy. I'll have to get you a better copy. You know, if they need copy. something better, and I think that's the the biggest thing. We just had nothing that you know. We had verbal, and most of the folks on the board knew verbal, but we did not have anything to, for us to even reference. That's about as close to being verbal as you can get. Is, that is. If they need something, if they need something better, we can fix. We can That's do, a, do that it better. Lease automatically renews itself unless one of the two parties terminates it. Now, uh, I really think it ought to be a little stronger wording. I do too. Time. I do too. But That's something we look at. Uh, yeah, it, that might get you going, and then will that get you through with your people? I think it would on that that farm. Uh, well, we just give you word that we, you know, we're going to do that. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's, like I said, we would just like to have something that we have, and this will get us started. I sure. appreciate it. Well, I, I'm sorry I didn't get it until after four. Well, we have looked, we've called, and I've even called these folks. They were the <coughs> actually looking for this also. So. Mm -hmm. it, it, can you talk to Corley and see if he can fix up something that's a little better? And then uh, we'll look at it and make sure. Something you want to negotiate I would, I, I would think that would be something that would probably be, for your knowledge, my knowledge, and my board's knowledge. Okay. Probably needs to be a little more permanent. Yeah. Like, like, see what he's see what he comes up with and we'll I'm, I'm talking over here and y'all ain't saying nothing. You know your job. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It smacked me if you don't like what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you got <a> put. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh Austin. <clears throat> Chairman, Bob, members of the commission. First of all, I want to thank you for your willingness to serve on this legislative body. It's not an easy job. It's a thankless job, as a matter of fact. And you don't get a lot of comments. You get a lot of criticism. I want to commend you for doing what you do and being that willing to do what you do. Secondly, I have a solution to the problem of the federal government's budget and debt. All I got to do is turn their budget planning over to this, this is your uh, budget committee, and let them ring it out, and we, we would have a budget that would be balanced with the federal government real quick, as, as this budget committee has balanced your budget real quick. Mm -hmm. I thank you for that. I'm here tonight to report to you and bring you up to date and make you knowledgeable of what's going on at the Adams Memorial Library here in, on College Street in Woodbury. Uh, in 1964, Dr. Jeff Adams died, and a couple of members of the Woodbury Lions Club uh, decided we needed to do something in the memory of Dr. Adams that would get so much to come down. And after studying and uh, talking with a lot of people around, we decided that a library building would be the proper memorial that would be fitting and lasting. We uh, formed a, an association. It's a non-profit association that meets the federal and revenue internal revenue service uh, regulations for 501c3. We are a charitable corporation called the Dr. Mr. F. Adams Memorial Association. We raised money here in Cannon County in 1964 and 65, and in 1966 we opened the library building, as you know it now, on College Street. We moved the library, the, U, the county library board moved the library out of a basement room in this building, into that building on College Street, and it's housed the library ever since at no cost to the county. Our association owns the building, we keep the building maintained and keep it up. And now we've outgrown the building, and so we're going to add an addition to it. I want you to be fully aware that this is happening and how it's happening and answer any questions you might have. Uh, why we're having to, to expand is very simple. The library services have ex expanded. The library usage has, has grown. In, uh, in recent years, uh, we've had uh, just an explosion of use of the library. There's 13,800 people lives in Cannon County. Uh, there's 5,424 registered users of the library. That's nearly a 40% of our total population are regular users of the library. Last year, those users visited that library a total of 49,400 times. 
That's a lot of traffic in and out of that building. And the building's really, we're, we're crowded. And we're, we're building, we propose and propose to build an expansion that we will probably let the bid on at the end of this week or early next week. The expansion is going to cost us over a million dollars. We have a lot of that money already raised. We're going to be raising the rest of it. Uh, in the next few weeks, you'll be hearing a lot about the library building expansion. Uh, we will build that building and keep it up just like we've always done, and the county will have total use of it at no cost to the county. That's a very unique situation. There's not another library that I know of that has a library furnished to the county that doesn't cost the county any, any operation cost. All you do in, in your budget does pay for the librarian and, and her part-time employees and light bill and that sort of thing. But we, we buy the new heating, uh, heating uh, HVAC, whatever that stands for. <laughs> We put the new roof on the building, then we're going to put an addition to the building, still at no cost to the county. I just want you to be aware of that, so when your constituents want to know what's going on out there, you will be fully aware of what is going on out there. I have here a brochure we'll be using in the next few weeks for a fundraiser here in, in, among our people. I will give you a copy of it, and inside, it has some very interesting statistics I read you a couple of them there. Inside, we have a drawing of the building and its expansion. The, the front end of the building will not be the front end when we get through. The front end that faces College Street now uh, will, will, will no longer be the entrance. The entrance will be on the back side of the new addition off of a, a paved, lighted parking lot. Street, uh, street parking will not be necessary anymore. In fact, it would be foolish to park on the street and walk all the way around the building to get in. We, we have a paved, lighted parking lot to the rear of the building and the entrance will be on that side of the building. Uh, there's some drawings here and the information you'll have. There's also some information here about some commonly asked questions about the thing and also for your opportunity to be early on a part of contributing to make this thing possible. We have $840,000 in hand right now. We only need about another $250,000 and I know you want to help make that as a personal cost. Not asking for tax money, no tax money. We want, your, we want to deep down in your pocket, give us some money out of your pocket, because your, your constituents are the ones using the library. I, I hope I'll raise some thoughts in your mind. I might have a question to you like to ask me. <laughs> well, you've eased them already by saying that, that you were just going to ask them personally for money, so uh, you so know, that's the that, best they, thing to do. It's easy to get money personally out of their pockets and get it out of you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the budget committee, I'll tell you that. May I pass these around real quick? Yes, I'll pass a couple of these on down there. How many square feet will be in the new addition? 3,000 feet. 3,000 feet. Yeah. And we're going to completely renovate the present building. The present building will be totally gutted out and, and rearranged to, to suit the needs, the current needs. We now have eight, I think it's eight computers out there, which have to wait in line to get used to the computer. We're going to have 24 computers in the new building available to the public. The meeting hall, the meeting building, uh, building down, the meeting room downstairs of the building uh, will be completely renovated and there'll be an entrance from the paved parking lot, the rear entrance on level parking lot to the new uh, renovated meeting hall downstairs, which incidentally is the only meeting room that we know of in the county that's available to use at no charge. Uh, not to everybody, but clubs and mm. organizations, uh, nonprofits, of course, get to use that building at no charge. Uh, last year, 360 kids, little kids, took part, uh, took part in a summer reading program. And that's, that's just the beginning. We're going to expect 600 this year. Is there any, did you get? Did I got you? one. Now, if you want to fill out that white sheet, don't hurry, don't do it tonight. Go home and think about it. Mm -hmm. Fill out that white sheet of paper and let us know how supportive you are of this library. Thank you. Thank you, Yes. Will we be shutting the library down for any period of time while you're doing this? It'll have to be shut down while we renovate the building. Probably for three weeks or so, it'll probably be shut down. We've been there for 47 years. It's time to do something. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Okay, we have committee reports, and of that committee, Theo, Prince. Okay, we'll just put her off there. Okay, okay, on uh, number nine, this where it, sa it, it says, um, uh, Chairman seeks per permission to pursue bond rating with Doug Bouldery. Uh, member of CTAS. We had talked um, last meeting. Hold on. I gave you a resolution. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. 
Which, which one? Uh, that's one for those. Well, there was a resolution to form a, a committee oh, to draft act. the private yeah. act. Yeah, we got the yeah, private act. Yeah. Okay. Um, this bond rating that we talked about is going to be able to, we have already put up the $5,000 for it, or we've, we've agreed to be able to have the $5,000. The, um, the people that are, are acting as a go-between uh, are a state agency, and they are going to the Moody Company, and the Moody Company is the one that is going to be uh, um, certifying us, if, it, if it's all possible, what he's going to do. So there was a, um, a form that needs to be filled out, and it's, it's, it's uh, in deep, in depth pretty well, where you have to go by and, and uh, find out about um, um, the, um, the building or the, the, big, the big money projects that like the school would have coming up, the county would have, uh, anything that any of the other departments need, the officers would, to see if they're going to do that because the debt that you owe is in complete um, uh, corresponds with us getting this uh, bond rating. And this bond rating, as we had said before, if we get a good bond rating on it, we will automatically start saving money on insurance, $10,000 a year to start out with. We'll also be able to get the loans that have the low interest rate on them. Uh, uh, we'll still be going to the pool, I understand, but we'll be getting a better, uh, better rate on it as far as the interest go. Are you sure about that? Yeah, that's well. That's what I was told. Yeah. That we'll get a better interest rate at the pool. Yeah, a better interest rate. That's what the bond rating is for, Mark. Is to be able to get you a better interest rate on the money that you borrow. Oh. Uh, who's told you that the uh, insurance that the insurance has the insurance company told you that we're going to get 10,000 you know i believe that you told me though no i didn't tell you that when we were when we were talking about it who was it? CTAS probably told the loan, the loan pool uh, they they're working with the insurance Steve Walker he's mm -hmm. the one who said that we would get we would save okay, get them, points right and, uh, and save that money yeah. anyway save which money on insurance the bond insurance, the letter, letter of credit mm -hmm. for the variable rate debt, um, that will drop in the cost if we have a new bond rate. And of course, if we go out for new debt, I mean, it's just like if you as an individual, you have a good credit rate, you typically get a better interest rate online. Just so we're clear, you're not talking about health insurance. We're talking about um, bond insurance. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that you've all got a letter from the county executive, and this is where me and Mike differ on this, um, because I got notified by Mr. Walker that the um, that the county executive had not filled out the form that needed to be filled out to be able to get this bond rating, and so it was sent to me via email from this Mr. Walker, and so. Mike says here that um, that he was not involved in the decision to make on it. Let me get it right here first. Okay, I was never consulted on this matter and therefore did not contact the board rating company in any matter. Uh, therefore, the person responsible for the application is a logical choice to fill out the necessary paperwork. I have very little knowledge of the application due to the fact that it was handled by someone uh, not associated with my office. And that's why I'm coming to you now because you've also got the email that was sent to me uh, to where it shows that Mike had, had stopped the proceedings. And that's something that we don't need to do is stop those proceedings to be able to get a good bond rating. Well, we don't need to rush into it though. And I haven't seen yet any hard uh, black and white in front of me from an insurance company or anybody else that it is going to do you money. do you disagree that a good bond rating is something it's so to it's, have it's just like a credit rating for a person if you've got a good record of your past payment right and you've got enough income coming in to pay it they'll loan you money you don't have to have a bond rating you don't have to have a credit rating to borrow money if you've got a good you know it's you know listen to dave ramsey on the afternoons and you you can find that out. I just don't think we need to rush into it though. I'm not saying I'm against it, but I'm not saying that we, 
I'm not when you propose that we do it, Mark? When? When? When we find out that it will actually save us money. Now, we put up the $5,000, but I don't vote. Well, I am told. Did, Doug, did, did we all vote for the $5,000? I don't remember how. It, yeah, I, it yeah. passed, yeah. The, yeah it all passed. It, the I think everybody passed. did vote for everybody it. Everybody voted for it. Yeah. Um, did Steve relate to you that there's a time limit on this? No, sir. It's just saying, we, you know, it's better if, if we want to go out for debt, it'd be good to go ahead and get a rating. And if we're unrated, it's just when they give us our insurance premium, it'll be the same. I just got done with uh, this same issue in Moore County, and they've already got the, you know, notification from the bond insurance that they're going to save money. And they could have a good rating. And that's one of the things. We really don't know when we're going to be in debt. Well, two months ago, we paid off a lot of debt, and now we're, it looks like we're anticipating getting in more. That, that's what sort of bothered me about the whole thing. Someone close to me said... That doesn't have anything to do with the bond ring. If you want peace, prepare for war. That's fine. We never have had to have one before. Do other counties our size have one, Doug? Well, I'm at Trousdale. I'm working with Trousdale right now, too. Have they got it yet? We're doing it right now, and hopefully within a week. What about DeKalb? I don't know about, no, DeKalb has one because they have fixed rate debt, so they get one before they go to market on their bond. They've got fixed rate debt. Well, now, this is no time to get a variable rate debt, I don't think. Well, time. we're not planning to go in debt right now. What we're planning to do is try to get a good bond rating okay. for our I, county. I, un I understand that, but I think the $5,000 was just a, a pretty expensive uh, credit check. Well, well you vote. If, yeah, I know that, but I, we didn't. Uh, we haven't spent the money yet, though. It's well, still in our hands. Well, it's still I mean, in our, if you had, still if you in had our reservations board. about it, what did you vote yes for? Because it was a, the way it was proposed presented. to us. Yes, that, that night, the way it was it presented. It hasn't changed. Well, we haven't had anything in black and white that said. Can you get something in black and white? <clears throat> From you our know, he, he said. He said, she said. Can you Can you get. Let's, I'm, I don't. I'm not a. We can get Steve Walker. He's with the loan pool. He can get you the information. Sure. But I'm, I'm, I understand. I'm not. If I, I was understand. a banker, I'd be rich. But I mean, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't do it. Would today. you be satisfied if we do that? Well, I'd be more satisfied. How long does this bond rating last? I don't know. Year, two year, five year? Typically, if, uh, it'll go for a few years. What they'll do is um, they, like Jackson County, they got one and then um, it's about a year ago and then they do a follow-up. The rating company will do a follow-up like within a year to see where you're at and, um, and it's still good. So it'll be good. Look, I, I'm sure if you went out to like a, get a large, it, like to build a new school or a jail here in a few years, they go into another one. So it costs another five thousand. Yes, sir. But you know, if you're going out for like half a million, five million, million dollars, you know, five thousand dollars to make sure you get the best interest rate possible. You know. So oh, this is going to cost you like five thousand dollars every two years? No. no, no. So you're saying we need that when we're going to borrow a large amount of money, that's when we need to get a bond rating. The next time, this is going to save you about ten thousand dollars, according to the loan pool, every year. And it costs you one time five thousand, so you're making your money back double the first year. But it's only good for a couple of years. I'm just saying that. I'm, like I said, I'm not. I'm not going to tell you this is the exact time frame, but I know that it's been good for Jackson County. So is it going to restructure our debt that we have right now? No, this is just to get bond rating. This is just bond rating. I, I know that, but you said just then that it would it would save us five ten thousand dollars on bond insurance on the bond insurance that we have right now with the loan pool because. Right now, you have all variable rate debt with the loan pool, and you've been saving quite a bit of interest rate. And it's not, and of course, you, you probably know this, is the variable rate debt that we're talking about is not like a home loan variable rate debt. It's got a cap, mm -hmm. and the reason being is you have this letter of credit. Mm -hmm. And the letter of credit is bond insurance saying, hey, you know, if, if Bank of America is back, and it, it says, okay, well, if, if this, you know, we couldn't find the, the remarket agent couldn't find a new buyer, then you know, we this letter of credit to pick up. Well, if we got a good bond rating, then that insurance costs us that letter of credit. So, and that's when Steve Walker from the loan pool they figured it up with the insurance company and said, if we got just a decent bond rating, if we're underrated right now, if we got a decent one, we would save us around ten thousand dollars a year in insurance costs. Right now? Yes, sir. And like I said, Moore County just got dealt with this and they've already seen it drop for next year. 
I'm just one voice. I just don't want us to rush into something that's going to cost us five thousand dollars, and then you know, and maybe a reoccurring expense when we don't really need it. We haven't had it uh, heretofore, and I haven't seen you know somebody send anything to you know any money that the county bars has to be signed by the uh, voted on by the commission and signed by the county executive, and nobody has sent us anything yet that said that. It was going to be that rosy of a scenario. And nobody's going to say that if they're making interest off of it. Well, this is a state pool we're talking about. I mean, that's the pool for everybody. That, they make it, money off. It's a private insurance company. It's the private, yeah, the letter of credit is from, yeah, from private. I understand that. All right, let me, let me add this. When I introduced Doug Baudry of CTAS, mm -hmm. I told him, I told you that he was a consultant to us because that's exactly what the state says uh, the CTAS is uh, their their own um, um, what they say is to help and serve the counties yes so, I appreciate that. okay I, you did a good job Doug showing us the things we could save on paying off those those loans but it, it appears to me that we're doing two things you know we're paying them off and to try to get less debt and here we're trying to get this bond rating in anticipation of of taking on more and so I, I wonder just whether we need the bond rating now. That's what, what I'm, I wonder if, wonder if it's going to save us anything. Anyway. We just said it was going to save us ten grand the first year. I mean, it's going to pay us if back you was getting, 5, If you could get a $10,000 grant for something that you was wanting to do and you had to put up five to get the ten, would you put up five to get the ten? Well, you show me the line item that that 10000 that where, where is this coming out of our budget then? Right now, right now, where does it come out of our budget? My, uh, Diane's here, do, do you know? I talked to the auditor today in the courthouse here, and I don't, I haven't seen it yet. She didn't, she didn't appear to think that it would save us that. So that's why I'm getting mixed message about it. Well, I certainly want to make sure that we do it right. That's right. And if we don't need it, I mean, well, there's... But we do need it. That is my opinion. And all the research that I've got, it's almost like it says, a good name would rather be had than all the gold and silver. Well, your good name is... And good. in the county business, a good bond rating is everything, in my opinion. Your, your past performance is your good name. And Cannon County's always paid everything they... Uh, obligated themselves for and then paid off a lot of them early so that should stand for something without Moody's or somebody you know researching it and telling us what we already know does everybody feel this way I don't I'd like to see proof that we're gonna save the money before we spend five thousand say what I would like to see something in writing saying we was gonna save ten thousand if we're gonna spend five thousand okay I mean I'll I would get feel it better we'll pass this on till next next meeting and I will have the information that we have good or bad pro or con because that's the way we and, work and, and find out if DeKalb County and maybe Smith County either one of they're about the same size as we are if if they've got a bond rating he done told them that they did Both of them have oh that what how did they get it they the same way pay, we're trying they to, pay get 5, it. to get it same thing that we're just doing okay now. well that's like I said Trousdale Moore was smaller than us they were just doing it the board just got done with Trousdale <clears throat> And see, it's something that they're just not doing, right? They, the cabs, the cabs have done this for years. They're but the, but trials and more, they're closer to our size. They're because they're in the pool, just, just like us with okay. their long-term debt. And I've talked to them. They, I both, I'm assigned to both those counties, and both of them, they, we showed them the same thing from the pool. The pool came down and showed us, and both the county mayors jumped on it. Let the pool come and tell us that, and then we may jump on it. Does it, but there's no rush. We're not, out, we're not wanting to, you know. There's no time like the present. Oh, we don't lose this 5000 if we don't no, make a decision. No, it's not it's set aside. It's We've just allotted it. It's We've allotted it. It's not going to retire and we're going to lose yeah, it. Yeah, it's, not, it's, it's not yet. already in because somebody else's hands. The way this, hands, the way this page know. reads, it says we don't need to lose this money. It's kind of insinuating mm -hmm. we don't lose it. Yeah. I just want to make sure we're not losing it. Basically, what you're saying, you don't want to save $5,000 here. That's what you're saying. Right? No, sir, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah. How, can no, you so prove you that we're going to save the $5,000? If you're going to save $5,000, if you're going to somebody going to give you $10,000 for five, would you get it? Paul, yeah. I haven't called for comments yet. Oh, no. Okay. 
All right, let's move on then. Okay, you're the chairman of the law enforcement committee. And we had had you and the rest of the law enforcement committee, Andy Bryce and myself, Kevin Mooneyham. Tony, were you over there? You're not on it. Who else was on it? There were four commissioners over there. Oh yeah, Russell Reed. Okay. Um, do you have anything, uh, any suggestion? Uh, Am any... I chairman of law enforcement? Yeah. I always have been. No, I haven't. Always been. <laughs> Who is? Is it you, Jimmy? No. <laughs> I'm not sure you're there. Uh, it does not state who it chairman state is. We it don't state who chairman we is. We chairman this year. Y'all haven't had a meeting? Who is Andy? You know? Dr. Rudin. Dr. Rudin was. Uh, go ahead. But well, I can comment. Russell can comment on the law enforcement. No, 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 no. I ain't no. <laughs> <laughs> you were there. I was there. As a guest. But now they remember. We had a... Uh, <laughs> I, I was there as a, uh, a commissioner. I'll make comments about it. We looked at the uh, building over there that the Cooler is presently occupying. And uh, they uh, showed us around a little bit. It needs some work. It's presently uh, being uh, occupied by a renter. And uh, there's a chance that it could be rented. If the county needs to be renting buildings, then it's it's convenient as far as that's concerned, but uh, we don't need to rent something if we don't need the room. Okay. Now, go ahead. Thanks. I, I should have said I was the chairman of it, I reckon. Uh, that's fine. Um, you know, there's a need. There's a need. There's a needed space, too. And I've written it down. A need, a need has arisen here for us in the courthouse, one that cannot be ignored any longer. And before I go on, maybe we as a commission ought to go downstairs to the circuit court clerk's office and tour what they have down there because it's hard to even do business down there. And I want to remind you that the county commission is the one that provides for these offices the judges, the sheriffs, the whatever it might be, we're to may, be able to make sure that these offices are, are taken care of. A need has arisen for us to be in the court that one cannot be ignored any longer. The need is for space. Space to be able to operate the op offices that are part of the machine of government. These offices are the center of daily operations of all the county where all monies taken in come to the courthouse and these offices. Vital records that have been recorded throughout the last eight decades are kept in only a couple of places, and one is the courthouse itself. Circuit Court Lynn Foster and General Sessions Judge Susan Melton had come to us initially to help us with the problem of overcrowding and the lack of space to keep records. The staff currently store some of the records in the old jail, but that is too, that too is bursting at the seams and can no longer hold any more of the record books. As you know, we first thought of the building owned by the region bank for the circuit court clerk's office. The commission agreed to ask the law enforcement committee to check out the options. The building is currently being used by the Cannon Courier newspaper office. The law enforcement committee viewed the building and came up with an alternate idea. And this was the alternate, this would come up by the, the people that were on the commission. Their idea was to take three and possibly the fourth office out of the middle floor of the courthouse and bring them over to the courier office. Now I cannot stress enough to you the importance of this building <coughs> in the county. It would put us in line for an adjoining building in case the building is being sold. But this building is more important to the county, to the county government at right time, than it would be for any other business to go in there such as a um, uh, another uh, antique store, whatever it might be. They'll be there for a year and be out or whatever. But when you start talking about putting in the county and then you've got a suitor that's going to stay for a while. Plus, we've already discussed this many times in different places, not necessarily in this commission this year, but we've also talked late, uh, further um, earlier about the need for a judicial building, which would cost us about $10 million. Now, I've got Ron um, over here from the, Ron Fryer, he's the owner of the Courier over there. He's going to tell you about the building, 
He's going to tell you that he's already got a building that he's rented and he wants to move out. But he wants to make sure at this time that he can get another renter in there because he's got obligations. Now, tonight is extraordinary. And I'll tell you why. We've got, we've got something that the last thing I heard as we got up from this meeting last February, uh, 14th of February, was that a budget committee member, and I think, I, Kevin, you can tell me if it was you, I don't know. I wasn't here. A budget, yeah, you weren't. Somebody had said to you, Mark, then we should just uh, depend on coming at 5 o'clock before the meeting each month. No, an well, hour before the meeting. Well, the, hour, the meet, Well, the meetings. Well, what did we well, meet, we last, meet month, up, last month then we made it six or seven. We made it at six. We always meet at six. Okay. Well, I, I've got my cell phone here. The first person that called me was today about any budget amendments, and it was at two twenty-one. Right. And I told him that I well, we'll take care of it when we get there at six. Which we can't. We can't. No, we can't. Not unless we do extraordinary because we have set a policy for this. You've got to go before the budget committee before you come to no, this table. The budget committee cannot do anything except for recommend to this committee when we don't have a one thing that's very simple. We did. We had more. And I I've, told these I've people. I've got it right here in black and white. I've told these people, Mark, excuse me. I've told these people that they are going to meet at 5 o'clock because the last thing I heard last meeting was that y'all were going to meet at 5 o'clock every time before the uh, meeting at night. I got a call yesterday from Tony. Was it Tony? When did you call me? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Monday? Yeah. yeah. Nobody told me anything that was to come before the budget meeting because I'm not going to call people into a meeting that there's nothing for. And I'll tell you, the first thing I got called for was at 221 today. And then we had one? From downstairs, Debbie yes. Morris, you know what? I told her, I said, they'll be there at 5 o'clock. Well, we were here at 5 o'clock last month, and nobody was here. So there's no need in dragging people around when there's nothing, no business to conduct. You know, just like I do, that the business comes we at the very last day sometimes. All 10 people here have, have, have the authority to vote on this business, and I will present it to them as clearly as want to and then right there is the sheriff and Debbie has given me what she has well if I know that there's somebody gonna be here I would have been here at five o'clock it has to come through me I don't think so yes I've got it right down here I've got it in black and white I was told by the county executive if I'm going to do this job I need to find out about it and I'll tell you nothing comes through this commission that I don't bring forward the the commission the commission as a whole agreed that any budget amendments or anything that went that had to go through that budget committee and the first be one forward. I, the first one I knew about was at two twenty one so, today. So anything that, that, that will make a change to the budget can't be acted on tonight. Well it can too. We got the authority we, to do that. No. We, we Every agreed that committee we, members here. We agreed we wouldn't do that. I we, don't think we agreed yeah, not to work on anything. And I beg to differ, Mark, you agreed to it too. Yeah. We did agree that we should be <laughs> Yes, we agreed yeah. that it would come with a recommendation through the budget committee. And, well, I, and I, I contacted you at eleven fifty two today. But you asked me if any and nobody I asked you if we were if we were gonna be here at five. Yeah. And you said no. That's right. Because so nobody had said there was anything to come before the budget committee. Question. Every single month you question. don't have to have Yeah, go ahead, Jim. No. Question. Let's go on with business. That's right. Okay. Anyway, Ron, would you stand up and talk with this is Ron Fryer of the Cannon Courier. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had um, the very pleasure of working with Andy Bryson for several, several years. I had the opportunity to buy the Cannon Courier about three years ago. And Andy and I agreed and I bought the Cannon Courier and took over the operation of that business in this county. With that came the location that Andy had uh, leased from Regions Bank on a five-year lease agreement that they accepted me as owner of the Cannon Courier and transferred that five-year loan lease agreement to me. I met with 
representatives of Regents Bank about a year ago the opportunity to purchase a building across the street that Miller Young owned to see about getting out of my lease and making this building available to somebody else. I was at that time informed by the management of Regents Bank that there would be no problem in getting out of my lease. So I therefore purchased the building that was Millard Young's Barbershop and the two adjoining buildings. After I purchased the building in May uh, and gave proper notice that my intent to move, I was notified by Regents Bank's leasing department, real estate department, out of Birmingham, Alabama, that I did not have proper authority to do what I was granted to do by the higher ups of Regions Bank in Tennessee. So I purchased the building. That building is set empty. I'm remodeling it. I put two lease um, tenants into the other two sides. This building is available under my lease. Um, under three particular instances with Regions Bank. One is a sublease that I present a potential sublease or to them, sublease C. They can accept, they can deny, or number three, they can in fact renegotiate a completely new lease. The building that Andy leased that I now have the lease on is 4,000 square feet. I was approached by individuals from the county, did not solicit from the county. I spoke to County Executive Mike Gannon about a year ago about whether or not he had anybody that he thought might be interested in a good location with frontage on West Water Street. There didn't seem to be anybody at that point in time that was interested. I found out from the Regents Bank that I had two or three options. I took the option of advertising for sublease, and we've had several interested parties, one of which is the county, from the contacts that I have had that have come forth to me. I have an individual that wants the building, has wanted to put down a deposit on the building, that I have held off from subleasing to for two or three reasons, and I will go through those with you. I understand local community involvement. I understand what it's like to have a square that's either alive or a downtown area that's dying. I've been through the process in Murfreesboro. I've been through the process in McMinnville. I have worked and owned newspapers in Franklin, Covington, and many other points of the state. A very viable downtown area needs to have traffic. It needs to be affordable traffic. The courthouse is crowded. You know it, I know it. What I'm holding on is not leasing to somebody else until the county government, you gentlemen, determine one way or the other in concert with the sheriff's department, in concert with the court clerk's office, in concert with the judges, to what you wish to do in downtown Woodbury. I think it's out of the question that a lot of money can be spent to build a judicial center. I do, however, feel that like administrative offices on Water Street and keeping business flowing downtown is a very viable part of keeping Cannon County active and in business. I have held off on subleasing this property until tonight. I think the Regions Bank would much rather deal with administrative offices on a long-term contract. And I have no problem telling you, I pay $705 a month for 4,000 square feet. 
I think that's a deal. I think Andy made a deal, and I was glad to get a hold of it. I have two years left on my lease. I can sit on that lease and let that go, or I can sublease it. But I'm here upon request by Bob Stetzel and the Law Enforcement Committee on what they met and talked about to present the opportunity to go to Regents Bank and recommend that they accept a letter from me on my determination to exit my lease and one, either sublet or two, which is more viable for anybody that's wanting long-term business to renegotiate a new lease with Regents Bank. I don't have a problem telling you that this year was a was a mild winter. I didn't pay over $300 on gas bill, and I never paid over $295 on electric for 4,000 square feet. It's $705. I have a renter wanting to take in. That means nothing to you gentlemen, I know. But I can sit on this for two years or I can sublease. I just think it's a great opportunity with the county approaching me, representatives of county government approaching me, to have an opportunity to look at what they're doing to rehab their building, new roof, they've resurfaced, they're painting. When Commerce Bank was active in this square, I think most of you know there's over 50 employees in that bank. There's seven employees in the region's bank. They wouldn't be rehabbing and growing unless they had plans for that building. And I think the first person into that building, if it's the county government, in my opinion, has first option to potentially have a wonderful administrator <clears throat> and judicial complex on the square right across from the courthouse. I was asked to come here and present my opinion tonight. My opinion. I'll be glad to entertain questions. Hmm. Any questions for Ron Pryor? Thank you, Ron. Is is up to date on the handicap? Accessible. It's accessible. It has a ramp up the front. Yes, up the front. Yeah. Can get accessible. Kevin, did y'all uh, uh, look at the expenditures and all that stuff in that building? Not really at what it would take, but I will say this. $705 a month for 12 months is $8,460 that we're going to pay to rent. If we're going to sit here and pass over trying to save the county $5,000, I'm totally against spending $8,000 more. Dollars. Plain and simple. You know, we could have went for the bond rating where they say they're going to save us $10,000 the first year. Uh, we don't want that, but yet we want to go rent something to pay $8,500 more dollars a year. What sense does that make? We don't want to save money. We want to spend money. We're backwards somewhere. I just don't understand it. And I mean that to no disrespect sure. to you, I none to Mark, and none to Mr. Fryer. I mean that to no disrespect to nobody. One of the things that we're looking at, it, this is the problem that we have right now. The problem is, it's really hard for us to make a decision about money when we don't know about the, the cost that it would actually do. To be able to build that to suit uh, the, the county uh, offices that are inside. And the plans were to take Debbie Morris's office and uh, uh, Wayne Praters and then Donald and all of them said they need more room and which they would get the more room over there but then again two of them want the window so <laughs> well, wait a minute back up so, to the last meeting you yeah. were going to look at putting uh, Lynn Foster over there and Susan Mel. right is that no go it's no go and I'll I tell know. you why it, it because their job has to communicate constantly with the upper court room They've got to, they're, they're called down, they said, I need this paper, you get it up. So all the paper is going to be coming from across the road, all the way up here, no matter what kind of weather, all the time. And the security. And the, the law enforcement committee talked about the security. 
that it takes to have run a courtroom and the court clerks being close by. Right. And this, see, one this thing is, is set up better for security than, than a leased building would be. And if plus it's a fact that too, even if if it went all the way, if we did that and we're able to get as many as we could in there, they could lock this building down. The police could. Hold up. Nobody's gonna be able to hear you here just in a second. Mm -hmm. And back to what you said earlier, I did go through the basement last week, Thursday, Friday, Friday I went through it. I walked through it just looking. And I don't know much about organization, but now I know somebody that uh, can do it and go in, and they can be a lot more room, you know, uh, filing boxes, little boxes sitting around. Just have, have you know, have. Also, I understand over to jail that it's just kind of pitched in there. Now, I didn't go look at the jail, but I hear it is just pitched in there as far as filing and all. They're afraid to go in there for the spiders. Well, they that jump. can be taken care of. Yeah. And I, you know, I, and I think we need to go in and get somebody that's, you know, some, maybe probably a company or somebody that knows how to organize, mm -hmm. put things together, and you'd be surprised how much room you can save. Okay, last night, uh, I mean, I'm gonna have my wife speak, if she will, um, over the weekend, the Regions Bank had a company come in to the basement, and it was a biohazard type deal. Tracy, would you would you mind talking to them? We had, there was a problem with mold and everything else down there, and water and stuff like that. Andy knows that in this one corner it always leaked and everything else like that. Well, the company came in and run them out over the weekend because they had they were. Uh, doing something downstairs mm -hmm. and no one could be around it. They were in bio suits and everything else and they even put a, uh, a, a big covering over the door at the courier that says you can't come in because it was it was all so they were taking care of the problem downstairs. Downstairs at one time you know it it held all of uh, Bill's uh, cars and, and, and horse stuff and everything else well it started leaking and of course that causes mold. Now after that was done there is supposed to be um, fixed. I don't know if it's fixed now, but it will be fixed after they've taken care of that. They're and going it, to, they're going to come down in two weeks, the weekend of the twenty fourth, and they are going to jackhammer some of the drainage problem area. They told me that the the water was coming in through the drive through. Some way the drains are not connected properly. And it's the water is going down in between the buildings. <coughs> so when it rains a lot, and we've been downstairs before, and it was flooded, uh, a good fourth of it flooded, and the mold is growing. So they are going to jackhammer some of the concrete up, lay PVC pipe down as a drain and bring concrete, and it's going to be brand new. This. Um Thank you, Teresa. This uh, uh, this is showing that the company is trying to get this building in good shape. Now, however, I have to go back and back up just a little bit, even though I, I remembered about it, but from what I just said tonight and the way we set our policy, there's no way, Ron, there's no way that we can actually say yes or no tonight because we're we are trying to get out of the bad habit of saying yes or no when we don't know what the cost is going to be on the end. So I would say to you, um, go rent it. He's told us what the cost would be. No, 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 no. We have got to build. We've got to build partition oh, office the, oh, inside. Oh, no, you mean the partition? Right. We have got. We've got to build well, an office for Debbie and an office for for Wayne and everything else, and still be able to conduct business the way that it is. But, like I say, we'd be violating our own policy right now. I've got a question anyway, though. We looked at that building first for Susan and Lynn, right? Yes. Well, then how did we wind up with these other offices being moved over there mm -hmm. instead of them? It's that what I said about the, the law enforcement committee came up with an Talks alternate. Security and, and the communication with the clerk to the court room. Yeah, but I, I understand why they don't want to be over there, but how did you come up with moving these other offices over there? Okay, though? here's how. I'm sorry. I, I, I passed over. Then, by moving these over, we would move the circuit court clerk all the way upstairs, and they would have these offices, and that would that would free up downstairs for 
for um, if they want to put more records or whatever it might be. But it's hard. Have you you've been down there, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you know where they're at, and then you look down the hallway, and you can only get through a little bit because there are records everywhere. That's not how to keep records. We, as a commission, have got to, to provide for uh, these offices to be able to keep our records and our business intact. So, anyway, unless somebody has something to offer, then I'm going <coughs> to take this off the table. Kevin, okay. do you think that uh, you ain't getting me to sign about this? That we need more storage in the courthouse. Hey, I. You was talking about the jail. You know, I the old, can, I can, the I can, old jail. It's, uh, that's been our storage room. The old jail has been our storage room. For somebody needs to say, well, Kevin, what do you think? <laughs> Kevin, what do you think? I, I think y'all ought to go down there in the wintertime when it's 90 degrees in that office because the heating pipes run over the tops of their heads as far above their head. I think you ought to go down there in the summertime when it's freezing cold down there sometimes because the only the air conditioner they got doesn't, do, doesn't have a thermostat and won't shut itself off and doesn't halfway work. You ought to go down there whenever the, when the water seeps in and they have to come down here on a Friday night at 9 o'clock at night and get all their records up out of the floor because there's nowhere to put them, set them up on their desk and all the wiring up on their desk. I, th I think it's a, a pretty crappy place to put the be one of the busiest offices in this county to do business. It's a, it, to, for me, it's a disgrace. And, and it, it's personal to me. Y'all know why. But it, it, it's pretty sad. And, and none of, none of y'all have to see it. You're not there every day. I don't, I don't have to see it. I hear a lot about it uh, constantly. But I don't have to see it. I don't have to be, be in it all the time. But they do. And, and then there's two flights of stairs that, that at least 20 or 30 times a day, somebody has to go up and down from that office on a court day, which now they have two court days a week instead of one like they used to. And jury trials on Wednesdays, there's no other office has to climb steps up and down 15 or 20 times a day. Yeah, your wife does. Your wife, I, I don't understand that either, but that's, you Can know. I just say, until July of last year, my wife works in, in the clerk master's office. They were storing records in there that dated back to 1863. So I think it's time y'all find somewhere to put their stuff. The, 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 the jail for storage is a joke. Um, they, they don't want to go over there. I don't blame them. You, you walk in there, it's dark. It's, na it's damp, it's nasty. There's, there's all the time something jumping out of a box on them, it, whether it's a rat or a mouse or a spider. Uh, no. Your wife doesn't have to deal with that. No. Yours doesn't either. Yours don't. Nobody's in his wife's do. Mine does. They won't ask because they don't want the people in the county to say, oh, they're wanting us to spend a bunch of money. That's why they won't ask. It's crazy. That's what Kevin thinks. Well, it appeared to the law enforcement committee the other night that it would be a a good place to rent if we needed if we needed the storage. And that's in this. Let me say, and, or the <coughs> office space, either one. You know, it, would. And the uh, determination would be who, who would go over there, and that, that would be left to them. For, for those office holders that are whining about the thought of having to go across the street, trade. Just trade out with the people in the basement. You won't have to go across the street. You, you get down there and live down there. And let them come upstairs for a while. And then we'll see who's whining in. Well, matter of fact, I think your wife gave me the tour the other day. We walked through it and all. And I questioned then why the elevator. Of course, anybody working up here can come up the elevator, correct? Mm -hmm. If you got the key. <clears throat> you ain't scared to get on it. What? You're not afraid it won't stop on you halfway up. But that's, okay. that's another point. And, of course, the water problem, she said that the water problem had been solved. They, they haven't had that. It hadn't happened since the renovation. Okay. That's good. And also, the elevator, there's no reason it could not be extended where it could go to the basement. Who's going to pay for that? The county will. Exactly. I mean, I think, you know, the time you spend enough to build in another building and rent it for so many years, you know, you could do, you could do something like this. You could sure. Well, you and I that. aren't going to agree on this. I can see that. Yeah. That's all right. I mean, she's, she's a, uh, they're not here tonight because they're not going to come up here and talk to y'all. 
But I think we need more stories. I, I really do. I, I just, I've been it's leaning It's a joke. It, yeah. <clears throat> it's a joke for them to be down there. It's a lot easier for us to do that, that than build it's a, a lot easier. It's a lot easier to set up. It's a lot easier to set up here and, and use an excuse to do nothing than it is to address the problem. Now, something like somebody can put a thermostat on that heater, though, on the air conditioner. It's just, yeah, hey, it's not, it's not, it shouldn't be occupied downstairs, is what I gather from it. And when I look down there, it shouldn't even be occupied. It's a dank dungeon, and that's it. And I would entertain anybody's um, idea on how we're going to solve this problem, especially since how you know, we got a chance to get it, but we would violate our own policy. <clears throat> There's one question I've not heard asked nor answered. Is the property assessor and yes. trustee and Miss Mars willing to go over there? They are, but the uh, but. Wayne Prater, right? Wayne Prater had told me that he does a lot of business with Diane. And so that bothered them about moving across. And then he said he doesn't want people to think that they're spending money. Well, they're not spending money. We're the ones that's doing the spending money. Well, now here's your, here's your solution to dealing with Miss Diane. Move that office over. Move the county executive over there. Yeah. And make this a judicial building. Lock yeah. all doors down from the outside where you have to come in one door. Mm -hmm. You, you can come up here anytime you want to when the court's not going on. Put anything you want to in these rooms and leave it there, hide it there, and then and then your deputies and your, and your court officers are dealing. They have to come through and search every room, search everything, check under every seat. It, it's a, it's a public building, but parts of this building shouldn't be public. If you make it a judicial building, you can block off certain parts of this building. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that Rutherford County does now because you can't even get in there without being screened. And that's all that comes in there is court. There's no other business that takes place. And you was talking about everybody wants the wind up front. Yeah. Well, that was simple, kind of a laughing thing. Simple <clears throat> solution. You make a small seating area there. Nobody has the window. Well, <clears throat> I don't think anybody's worried about the window. I'm, well, uh, he was just joking about that. Yeah. But this seems to be an a opportunity to get a rent that is very reasonable to me, you know. Well, you know, I've got the same opinion as Kevin Mooneyham down there. You know, we're wanting to spend this money, but we're not willing to try to save money in the same sense, too. Okay. We're going back to the other. Well, well let's, the roll the, let's roll Waiting, this. Let's leave that behind us. If we wait one month to do that bond thing and find out that it's, it's the right thing to do, what is that harm? One month. Let's you can't, argue, you can't argue with that. Roll that's a, that's the same thing we did during our budget last year. We waited to see what we had before we did anything. I make a motion we roll this to the next meeting see what the cost is going to be. Need to know what's going to take for renovation. By the next meeting, it's not going to be available. We can act right now. Mr. Fryer's here and we're here. There's no reason we can't. All ten of us are here. There's nobody absent even in this meeting. So... Let's, let's it have to come before the budget committee? No, it doesn't. We're the only ones that can vote on it anyhow. <coughs> that is the truth there. And we're also the ones that are, that are. Uh, I think I've got it right here as far as the, um, yeah, okay, the buildings the and everything else like that. We're the ones that can yes, enter into the lease. and, and right. uh, It wouldn't have even come before the budget committee if you, that's not. What we need to do then, Mark, if I'm getting you right, which which good we finally agree on something there, is the fact is that if we if we get this, and we tell them that we're going to take it, then we can take our time to be able to get it done. I think that we need to go ahead and rent this building, and uh, and and have everything uh, needs to be done within a year. That way we can go along doing different things like that, and then we'll be able to move every, everybody over that needs to come over. Yeah, but what's the cost? I know the initial cost of renting, but what is the initial cost of <clears throat> renovation? Okay, then let's just go, let's rent this building. Let's don't do nothing until we come up with a solution somewhere. 
We're going to have to sign into a lease to rent the building, ain't we? So we're guaranteed it's ours for however, what, how much longer we got? We to sign. Two years. For two years. So you're going to take, you're going to take a sign a lease for a hope that it all works out and fits in our budget. No. You don't want to hope for nothing. You have to have you know a plan. That's what I'm saying. But you're, you're, going to, you're going to have to act on this pretty quick to get this building. Right. So you're going to have to sign a lease with him to get this building. For two years. For two years. $16,000. We don't. It, it could cost $100,000 to renovate this building. It may only cost 5000 We don't know. And you're, you're at a hope of hoping it don't cost a lot, but you don't know. That's my only thing. Yeah, see, that, I mean, we're talking about taxpayers' money. I mean, you know, <clears throat> the initial rent, I ain't got a problem with no. that. No. But we don't know what it's going to cost to put these people over there. I agree. So, I mean, you we know. We don't. <clears throat> it'll cost $2,500 to move the computer from Debbie Morris's office over there. She's already checked on that. Alright, have you got to, have you got the paperwork to show us that? That's just the computers. That's not talking about the rest of it. He don't even know he did. Right. <laughs> Basically what the man came to He got a hit to sign and he didn't catch it. He talked to us the other night, the law enforcement committee. Kevin Mooneyham, you were over there. What did he he gave us a sort of a I don't remember he said what he said. He said it wasn't going to be very difficult. I don't. Said. Yeah, yeah, and he didn't. But here's the whole thing. You know, we're sitting here and this bond rating. What if? What if? What if? You know, if this bond company, if this insurance is going to save us ten thousand dollars the first year right up the bat, if. and we're and we're getting away from that, but yet we're wanting to sit here and sign a two-year contract for a building for sixteen thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars. Of taxpayer money, we're not willing to save them any money. We're just wanting to spend their money. We're working backwards. I was wanting to save them the five thousand dollars that I haven't seen that yet that it'll cost. You know, to save you ten. I'd lot rather lose five thousand dollars trying to get a bond rating as I had to spend sixteen thousand dollars. And like Jim says, Go it costs fifty thousand dollars. Bond rating. I'm only one person out of ten. If I vote against it, it will still pass. Uh, uh, did we table that to the next meeting? Yeah. You know, yeah. oh, here in Canning County, somebody brings it off the table. Here in Canning County, everybody knows this old adage. I'm sure, a horse can break break its leg, and you can shoot that horse, but it, it don't fix the leg. It doesn't fix the leg, and that's what needs to be happening. You have to fix the leg. Now, if we want to rent that and put all the books over there as storage for right now, that would do us a lot of good that too. Is that right? Then we don't have to build not one simple <coughs> we, wall. We've got a guy. That's I, know, on a, I know. I know. I know. I, I'm trying to make a point here. <laughs> He's saying if we just rent it for storage, it's yeah. still a good deal. That's, that's what right. you're saying, right? Right. 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 That's right. right. Mr. Higgins will probably make you a better deal. Who? Mr. Higgins will probably make you a better deal. <laughs> Eight thousand dollars a year for story. And Long I'm money. not and I'm not taking nothing away from Kevin. <clears throat> I sympathize with his wife and everybody that's down there. Because for twenty one years I've been running down them steps and running up here just like they have. I sympathize with him, but to me it's a matter of principle. We're not willing <clears throat> to save money, we're willing to spend money. I agree. I was wanting to save the money. Exactly. To help pay Pay to get them out of that basement, but <clears throat> and then See, it, that really ought to come off the, the table. The we leg ought to that is broken tonight. is the fact is what we got people down in a in, <clears throat> in a damp <throat> place. We just agreed to it. Well, it, it's, uh, it was tabled. It's got to be voted on tonight. <clears throat> well, that's, a, that's a point. Nobody made a motion to take. Nobody made a motion. What's Nobody it? seconded it motion to take. Consensus. Go right ahead and, and get on that. If that's going to bother everybody. One thing that needs to be happening, you know, we're sitting there saying what it might cost, Jim and I, you know, you and I, we can come together sometimes and sometimes we can't. You're looking at what it would cost and, and that's an unknown right now. But, but what is known is that we can get this building and then we can work on it. Even if we put storage in it to satisfy the, the fact is that we're, we're paying $705 a month for it. But we have to move on. We have to move on. We, if we sit here and say, well, let's table it to next, then Mr. Fryer is going to rent it tomorrow. And I don't blame him. But if we don't, then we still got no hope of taking care of, of Lynn Foster and all the people down there because there's nowhere to put them. We're going to have to have a building somewhere. And, and, and like Kevin said, you go down there and work in there. I don't even like to go down there. It's, <coughs> Makes it clogs me up. Can I ask a question? Yeah. 
way. Sure, Curry. Go ahead. In two years, who are you leasing it from? At the end of the Regents week, at that time. Regents. What if they say no? Ron, do you have they any? They have to approve. They have to they approve. Have, as I said earlier, they have three options. To approve a sublet, to disapprove a sublet, or renegotiate a totally new contract to buy me. Have they ever told you that they were going to go up as soon as your contract went out? At the end of two years, and my contract is <clears throat> going to 805. But if you renegotiate a new contract, that's totally up to camp. What if you put in a lot of money, though, like yeah, I well, I think that probably once we get into it, uh, and he has told them what is going on, then that's the time that we negotiate. We and asked, then we're only out two years. We asked for longer term, five years. I think you renegotiate it right now before you do anything. Yeah, that way you know exactly you what you got to guarantee. You won't be surprised if it goes up to a thousand dollars a month or something. Hmm? You don't know where you're going with it. I mean, you know, you don't know what it's going to cost you. You don't know two years. You don't know what it's going to cost. I mean, it's just, you know, I know why I would if I was personally do it. Well, that I would lease a building like that, not knowing what it's going to cost me in two years. I want somebody to make a motion to table this in. I make a motion that we that we lease the building. Got a motion to table it. No, yeah, we don't. He asked. He asked I for did. a motion. Oh, did you motion? Okay. Mm -hmm. He did. did. Do we get a second? Any, nope. Any other discussion? No. Nope. I'll withdraw the motion then. Well, wait a minute now. Died. You're saying it's either tonight or never. It's a possibility. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, if he, if you have somebody that has been. Is already um, we're going to put the money up. I would up, assume right? that most individuals around this table have a sense of business. I would assume that, and I would assume they would understand me being a businessman. I'm going to take what's in my best interest to do. I've waited two months on subleasing this building for this night. Mm -hmm. Right. If I was in this gentleman's place, first and walked in the next tomorrow, if they wanted it. I'd say it over to him. I would too. Because that's money this man can use to run his business. Okay, uh, Russell has withdrawn his motion, and Kevin has made a motion that we lease the building. Is there a second? Okay, it dies. I'll second. Ooh. Mm. Y'all are making awful difficult. <laughs> Who won? <laughs> He did. Well, I can make it again. Well, go ahead. <laughs> I'll make the motion to lease the building. You want a second? Bobby. There's a motion on the table by Kevin George and seconded by Mark Barker to lease the building known as the Cannon Courier for $705 a month from Ron Fryer. Could you call the roll? Yes. No. Well, if I'm not going to vote to spend money on saving 5000 if it, that's the truth, then I'm not going to vote for this, so I vote no. Jimmy Mayer. No. Jim Bush. No. Kevin George. Pass. 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 No. I just want to see what everybody else thought. No. Kevin Mooney. No. That's a good deal. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Karen had asked to come up. Uh, you would have been under other business, Karen. I know, but I need to go to work. Okay. I'm sorry. Other business right now, Karen Ashford. Um, last month I came to you about a fire truck. You said go find something and bring it to them. Right. All right, here's the one that we're looking at. Uh, we, it's in Alabama. We can go look at it, and we probably will if y'all approve it. It's 69,000. Only has 22,000 miles. That's uh, pump test, hmm? lettering, delivery, everything. 69,000. It's got a 1,000-gallon tank, hail pump, 
Any other questions? <coughs> I'll try to answer them if I can. Did y'all approve to buy a fire truck last month? Last month. We're approving the look. Did you approve well, the amount? No. Karen, nothing against you or nothing, but going back to the thing with the um, stand, <coughs> he wasn't approved to come before us and ask for uh, money. And I was at the last fire board meeting, and the way I understand it, they I didn't approve you. I was told to go back to the fire board meeting. I was told to go get this said. and bring it back to the commission. The fire board didn't was that approve not you to come. I'm, right, I'm looking at it right now. That's what I'm saying, though, is the fire board didn't approve you to come the and first ask time. for a truck the first time. And if that, we're going to follow the rules, we need to follow the rules The fire board told me to go to the, the budget committee everyone. the first time. I went to the fire board the first time. They told me to go to the budget committee. With the truck we had, the budget committee did not do anything. I came to the commission. That's what they told me to do. The commission said, find a truck, bring it. That's exactly ask, what, ask I Jimmy, what I did. Jimmy, Jimmy said you said the last meeting. Did they say that they did not approve her to come and ask for a truck? Is that not right? That's that that that's correct. But we were told okay. by you, I mean, Karen. As far as the fire board approving everything. That's right. With but the other truck. the commission did. Now, they didn't tell me to bring one to buy, but they didn't tell oh, me okay, I couldn't okay. either. I mean... I'm just going by what y'all told me to and do it, last yeah, time. Okay, but evidently we were misled because when you said that it was the fire board that told you to come, you said it was on that last truck, the, the one that's leaking, that's going to take $3,500. And y'all said you didn't want to fix that truck, to right. find a truck and bring it. That's what I've done. That's right. Yeah. It says, Ashford was told by the commission to put out bids for used fire truck and bring it to the board. That's what it said. That's, right. that's what happened. I see it. And she came to the budget committee. Yeah, I went to the fire board. I went to the budget committee. Right. I went to the commission. That's right. I'm back to the commission because that's what I was told to do. That's exactly right. Yeah, but what I'm saying, though, is the fire board told her to see what it would take to fix that truck and come back to the fire board. Okay. Because that's uh, what I was well, told. You don't think that's what they said? It doesn't really matter. They which, gave which us the commission. go ahead. And there wasn't anyone something. at the light fire board meeting from Gasboy. I wasn't there. I wasn't we didn't know we needed to go back to the fire board meeting. Didn't say well, it was that's, that's what we'll we'll say in the meeting. Okay. okay. All right, hold on. Hold on. <sighs> hold on, please. Let's keep this orderly. All right. No matter. You need to speak, Tony. Well, I want you to tell us what you turned around telling yeah. her. Tell I us. went. I went to the fire board meeting, the last meeting, and they brought this up about her asking for a new fire truck. And they stated that they didn't understand why. They needed a board if someone could bypass the board and come straight to the commission and ask for a truck. And that's when I asked them straight out, did y'all not give her permission to come and ask for a truck? And they said, no, we did not. Grady, you're here. Is that not what happened? There you go. What did he say? Yeah. I said, yeah, that's what happened. So I agree. That's why you know that's what I stated about Stan last time. He didn't go before the commission to come before us. Yeah, Karen, I didn't agree. It's the Karen, same way. You know, if you're not going to follow the boards, then why have them? Karen, go to the, your fire board, please, and then bring it back, and uh, make sure I know so we can call a budget meeting. Well, I I'm, I'm can't be uh, sure that that truck will be there without putting deposit on it. I know. That. If I go another month, we don't we, we don't worry about I know whether that's or not the same. It's the same thing we we just went through. I know, that's but irrelevant. we need a truck bad. I know you don't worry about it, but we need a truck. I no, we that. do worry about it. Well, Kevin just got through saying we don't worry about it. I said we don't worry about whether that one will be there or not. Because there's always more. He's being facetious. Yeah. It's a, it, it, it's a playback. Well, the other, the other tr trucks that I have looked at that are in that price range are in Pennsylvania, and I don't know that we have anybody can go up there and look at it. I mean, I've got another one right here, but it's in Pennsylvania. And it's it's a, a year newer model, and it's $10,000 more. I looked at a 99, uh, same as almost the same as that truck right there, a 99 model, and it was... Uh, uh, 89.5. Mm. Well, yeah, there's some trucks out there, but they're higher prices up there too. You had some help last time on the on the commission here, because it's just like Mark said that he agreed exactly what we said to you. Uh, we're we're bound and determined to do this the right way, and that's it. And so, if you wouldn't mind, go back, convince your fire board, come up here, and we'll work with you. Uh, Mike Gross has got a question or something he'd like to ask. I'm sorry? Mike Gross has got a question or something he'd like to ask. Now, the way I understood it when I was here at the last meeting, she brought that about request about getting the truck fixed. 
and y'all told her no, go out because it wasn't going to be worth fixing the truck. Y'all told her to go out and find a truck and then bring it back. Y'all didn't tell her to go back to the, uh, to the fire fire Y'all told her yet. to bring it back to y'all. Exactly. Amen. Mm -hmm. hey, we agree on that. All right. Well, if you agree on it, and that's what you told me, why am I having to go through Well, there's only two of us that agree on it, what I'm saying. Well, yeah. there wasn't but half of you here. Jimmy well, agreed on it. Jimmy knows uh, I, I was definitely. here. Definitely, and here's the, here's the many that came from the fire board meeting as of January 23rd. It says, Gazaway. Gazaway was to call Jay Womack to check Pumper out. Then was told to check welders out in county for repair a tank, motion, made had repair done when welder is located motion made to have repairs done when welder is located motion made by michael buchanan second by michael george motion carried so and i talked to the i talked to the welder we had the, uh walmart come out and look at the pump he said the well the the tank had to be fixed before he could even check the pump because it was leaking so bad he couldn't tell nothing about nothing and then he couldn't fix it until he knew what the problem was and that was going to cost us $3,500. That's right. More than trucks And that's why we said, no, we, we don't want to fix that. We don't want to pay the money to fix it. That's the uh, same thing that y'all were talking about, I think, wasn't it? Can I say something right here? Wait, just a minute, Greg. Actually, it says in the meeting, minutes of the last meeting, it says to take the tank off and determine if it can be fixed or not before we did. We did. We did. We did tank. We took the top off, and he said, it was it was going to be three days work it, it was expensive i gave you everything at the last meeting exactly right. what he said what the mm -hmm. welder said mm -hmm. thirty five hundred dollars and then fifteen hundred dollars that was five thousand all together and you couldn't guarantee that it wouldn't last a week if you would go to your fire board please I know that you don't want to hear that, but that's how it's going to work. I don't want to hear it since y'all told me to want to come back. That's right. We, we told her. We got the target. Hey, what, tell once her we, to come back. Once, if, if, if we told her last meeting we, to bring something to us, she brought it. I mean, uh, it's not the right fire to board. Tell me to go back to the fire board. All they're going to do is make a recommendation. Well, the the fire country. board is, is, uh, has no more authority than any other committee in this county as, as far as spending money. If we only uh, buy half a dozen trucks, they wouldn't fuss me. And oh, I'm sure they no, wouldn't. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Matter of fact, I think Clint's got well, something to whether, say about that. I so mean, it, she she did what's right, and, and, and what we asked her to do. Right, and I I think you're wanting to act on this a lot faster than what we're wanting to. I, we can't give you the. I don't think give you the okay to, to purchase this truck or even put a deposit on it. We have to make as a group a decision what we're going, what direction we're going to have to go. You found the truck, and I understand that it may not be there, but if, I've got two others. Right, and I under and right, but we have to make a decision on, on what our next step is. And you did what you, we told you to do, and you brought the trucks back. Now it's up to us to make a decision on what we want to do. But that's the way I see it. And then, right, and that's, and that's the what. Full man cab mandatory. It was the. It's not. I mean, we don't have to have a four-man cab. We looked at a two-man cab, but we don't like the pump. The the pump that's on the two-man cab. It's a chain drive pump. That one's a gear drive. That one's cheaper. Ten thousand dollars cheaper than this one. I mean, I no. We a two-man uh, truck would be fine with this, but it, the one they have here. With the four-man cab going found, in the building. Yes. Check it. Y'all have a four-man cab now. Yes. How many times you roll? Well, it's not floor? a four door, but it's yes. we don't. But that's not what. That's not the point. I'm trying to trying to get the best truck that has the best equipment yes, at the best price. I mean, it was, it's only got twenty two thousand miles on it. The mileage ain't the question. I, well, it's I agree. I mean, that's not all of it, but I mean, hours or something. Seventeen something. Said. That's low hours. hours. That's that's still a low. It's slow hours. It came from Mississippi. But my I point, think they have a, a rule or a law down there that after 15 years they take them off. Don't matter how many miles is on it or how many hours is on it, they take it off. That's what the man told me. No, my point with the four man cab is if you rode with four men ever, I or agree 90% with that. of the and time. We, and we would be fine with a two man cab, but it just didn't, I didn't find one like that. Is what I'm saying. I forgot one here, but we don't like to pump on it. Kevin. 
if we don't take recommendations from committees and we want to take recommendations I, from committees. I, I agree but but at the last meeting when this when the commission gave her instructions right. Right. they they took it upon themselves or we some of us wasn't here but 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 we took it on ourselves to, to circumvent the opinion of that committee we gave we gave her instructions we gave we asked her to do something for us and if when we did that we didn't we should have said what did the fire board say at that time mm -hmm. we didn't she she did what she was asked to do i did at um, the time what the <clears throat> fire board told me to do and, and then y'all decided <clears throat> to maybe get a truck and bring it to you that's what i did yeah we, and then we have a question well, about that that's well, all we took about. Um, the question about it we, we still I think that we still I gave her instructions. That's right. right. I think that committee can can be a good thing, but if if um, apparently we chose not to send it back to that committee. So are you talking about <laughs> making a motion to accept this or what? I don't know. Are, 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 you don't know. Did y'all did y'all ask her to to bring a truck for us to buy? No. no. What did just, what did you ask her to do? To see what it would, what we're looking at as far as cost wise compared to fixing one that's a truck that's you're putting chasing bad money with good money compared to what it would cost us to. Did you understand it? No, I didn't understand it that way. Well. How did you understand? I understood it that, that they was wanting me to get one to buy. No, that was no, not, that was that, that was never. Well, well. Is that the way you understood it? <laughs> well, it, hey. Um, See, there's two trucks wanting purchased right now. Westside's wanting and, one, and, and you're wanting one. And the guy told me I talked to the to the guy. I asked him about that, and he said if we bought both trucks from him, he'd give us a better deal on them. And I called John Naylor. He said he's talked to the same company, but a different man in that company, different salesman. And John is not any closer to, to finding something to buy than he was six months ago when I talked to him last night. He's not ready. I know. I, I mean, I was trying to save you money. I asked him, if we buy two from you, can we get it cheaper? And he said, yes. My understanding is we would consider it. When she brought it back, we would look at it and consider it. Mm -hmm. Now, we can consider it. I need a break. Now, where it passes or not, but I think it's, it's a, you know, that's my understanding the last What did we pay for that other truck? 65, 65, 62, 65? I don't remember. 65, I believe. Is there any, how many departments are in the county? Seven. 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 How many of them trucks and then departments? How many of them departments need no trucks? Six. All of them. All of them. Six. <laughs> yeah. Looks like time, me that yeah. we're just trying to all of a sudden jump on. We're again doing the same thing. We're just trying to throw money when we need it. We need to start planning. I mean, you know, maybe we need to start putting in the budget every year to Buy replace a truck. Every year. You know, uh, we're just throwing sixty-five thousand dollars here, and I, and I want her to get a new truck. I know she needs a new one. Uh, but we're every every. <laughs> We're, every year we're just throwing money in without any planning. <clears throat> let's let's start planning to spend money and spend it wisely. <laughs> I agree. You know, instead of trying to chase our tail, let's get ahead of the dog a little bit. The uh, the fire board put in a request for a new truck. They've been doing that for several years. Had you graded? Yes. Yeah, the, the the planning has been uh, as as far as the fire board's concerned. They've been trying to plan to replace some of these trucks. But uh, uh, from the from a budget committee side of it, uh, with the fire board's request every year, when, when they request for a, a brand new two hundred thousand dollar truck, it it pretty much gets wiped off right off the bat. Uh, it it might be wise to ask for enough money to buy a couple of used trucks instead of asking to buy a brand new truck and everybody be fighting over where it goes like we did with the pump. Um, that's I, I'm saying that because we're coming up on the budget pretty soon so mm -hmm. everybody needs to remember that I, I laid out in front of you and with the help of Mr. or though Doug he got us a am amortization report of what there's two separate papers there was one for a note of 390,000 which that would be a purchase of six departments at a cost of 65,000 average and that gives you an idea of what we're looking at <clears throat> for that one payment, and there's another one that's for a note, a three-year note for 130,000, which is the purchase of two trucks, which Westside and Gasway are in need. But from what I was told, that we could do some sliding around. Short Mountain makes the second, the next second county to Moortown as far as calls. We could possibly maybe change around and send Short Mountain to Gasway to help move some trucks around. 
give and it worked. Doug, would you care to help explain this way you explained this to me today? Okay, yes. Um, you know, been working with Bob. Bob asked me about when you started on the, the, uh, get the ball. I'm sorry, say that again. Um, the, um, <coughs> what can I speak first? Sure, um, yeah. Okay. Um, they, um, Why don't you stand up, Doug? Uh, <laughs> I need to. <laughs> Oh, um, uh, Clint, after you know, he had, uh, he called me, asked me to help him, you know, of course, last last meeting, he talked about doing, you know, we need to do some type of, uh, you know, um, auto, you know, some type of capital replacements on the on fire trucks, long-term plan, and Clint got to look at it, he called me and asked for my help. Um, of course, you know, $200,000 truck would be about 10 cent on a levy increase for a truck, and there's other needs, so it's, you know, it, it's kind of kind of steep. For a small county with a small tax base, but however, two good used trucks, you know, to keep the volunteers safe, that would be good. Um, so we got to look in the debt, um, debt's, debt load that we currently have, and notice that next month, fire truck, the last payment for the fire truck note that we've got now, is going to be paid off, and that's about twenty something thousand dollars of capacity right there for a debt payment with no new extra cash. I factored that in plus the interest savings that we made off paying the, the stuff off early. Mm -hmm. And then I factored in the $10,000 that we would have saved in bond insurance from good bond rating. And <laughs> we could have, sorry, but we could have, uh, we could go to the market this next month and get that note, you know, and replace two trucks and then every three years and we if, if revenue comes in good we can make a double payment at the next at the second year and basically every two years we can get two decent not new but good safe tire trucks within six years we can replace every truck without additional tax burden on the system if you'll look at your annual debt payment that's almost forty four thousand a year we're taking debt service in almost forty thousand a year in debt service anyways debt service will stay at the same fund balance we just would use that money that the two cents we use anyways to help pay for these trucks yeah if you look at this there's an extra two cents in it yeah already you have to say that louder i say if you look at this at the at the audit there's there's an extra two cents in it anyway yes but uh that's that's a discussion for another day. But the problem we got now, Gazaway got to have a fire truck now. Well, they they are they're mm -hmm. out. Right. You know, well, we have, bought one. Yeah, this, that, that, that last one we bought, we bought mm -hmm. one or two meetings. I mean, we got the authority to put a down payment on this sixty-nine thousand dollars truck, and we got the authority to get two trucks. Doug just told us we got to know going to be paid off. What was he telling us about the water had, line? And, and Todd, you'll admit this, yeah. we had planned on when these other fire we trucks... We talked about it last time. But when, we when these notes were paid off, and we're within a month, so we... I think we ought to see if we can move on one of these trucks themselves. Now, with the payment you're looking at, that's because us having a favorable barn. You're going to spend money right? this time? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's just that. Sorry. It's a matter of principle. I ain't it. We should get a better rate, which is a bond rate. You know, because that's the same bank that said the last time. If I think it's the right thing to do, but it said, I'm hungry. You can't spend like $700. Right. There's another viable option I think we can go the other direction with. Okay. Well, we hadn't even brought that up. Y'all, they just started talking about it. Okay. Hey, hey, has everybody, everybody take a five minutes. Minute. Stand up. Thank you. <laughs> Need to go look. They're still going to have to go through the
Question about this fire truck business. Did did the fire Grady Junior's here somewhere in it? Yeah, Grady. Did y'all have an election the other night? No. What does that mean? Does that mean is this is the fire board still the same as it was before? I mean you still the chairman? Yes. If if we buy two trucks, is this commission gonna decide where those two trucks go and, and only one of us knows anything about fighting fire, or is the fire board gonna decide? Needs to be fireball. Okay. All right. Now, Karen has done the work, and she's done the study, and and, and to to come up with something up here, a truck up here. If if we vote to buy two trucks, and the fire board says she doesn't need a truck, where does that leave Karen? Without a truck. Okay, Jim. All right. Who's going to go hunt the two trucks up? Who's going to go? Who's going to go find two trucks if we vote to buy two trucks? The forward chief of the department. I'm with them, so Yeah. So we all decide what two departments will be getting trucks, and those two go. But also before though, y'all approved them departments to come to ask for a truck, though, right? You approved John Naylor to come here, didn't you? We went about a year ago. We went to the whole of trying to get uh, more towns fixed. The first Gasway truck was never approved to buy that truck that y'all bought for me. That was never approved by the board. He's, he's talking about the one that come from Auburn. The one they got now is tore up. It was never approved by the fire board at all. But anyway, as far as it was. We did that line. Anyway, that's, it's, that's old, but anyway. Uh, but we never, we wanted them to have a better truck. Thought we was trying to get them a better truck, but we didn't, we didn't get that done. You know, we all bought it for them. All right, here we are, broke down. Again, already this quick. Uh, we will, we would look at the numbers on that, working on that truck. We got money in our budget to fix that truck. You know, probably can fix it and fix it good. Like I spent the same amount of money on ours about ten years ago. Put it back to start. Turn in, turn in. It's about almost. You're gonna if if you if you vote to buy two trucks tonight, you have to you have to have know in your mind and know in your heart that that you're gonna buy those two trucks. Give them to the fire board to use them as they see fit. Uh, because at some point we have to quit asking them what they think and then doing something else all the time. And it, we, we need to go one way or the other. We either need to get in the fire business or we let, need to let them handle the fire business. Well, wouldn't it be most uh, the ones that ain't got the fire trucks and the ones that's got the two worst fire trucks will get the first two? That's why, that's why I'm asking. If, if, if you're going to vote to buy a truck tonight, you need to be voting to buy it and give it to them with no strings attached for them to do what they see fit as professionals in that field. Are they going to replace the two worst trucks? Ask them that. That's, they'll have to, I think they would have, that they would sit down and look at the numbers and they might need to move trucks around in different places and make sure they got the, the best trucks for the most calls. That's what I would think, but I'm not a firefighter. That's why I say they need they need to make those decisions. If they're not, if we're not going to let them make it. Disband the fire board and let's make them ourselves. One or the other. We got enough problems. <laughs> Did y'all authorize John Naylor to come about nine? You authorized John Naylor to come. And, and now uh, you authorized Karen to come and see about fixing a truck. No, we did not do that either. No, the other fixing was. No, well, we didn't do that either. Yes, you did. We was told. We came to the fire board and you told us to bring it to the budget committee and then about the committee. About fixing it. Not to buy it, to fix it. Well, we didn't. It's in the minutes. I mean, you had to make it. I didn't write the minutes. Well, I've got the minutes. All right. 
Were well, they authorized to come and ask? Well, let's, let's not go back into that. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. It doesn't Jim, make any difference. We took Mr. it. Mr. Chairman, we took it. Yeah. Let's, let's back up. Let's okay. back up. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the bond rate. Okay? <laughs> let's go back to the bond rate. Okay. I make a motion that we go and go ahead with the bond rating to see if we get our bond rating. And then let's go from that and then let's see about purchasing these two trucks. Okay. The thing was, um, Jim, uh, was that it was uh, on the bond rating. It was to authorize me and uh, Doug, Doug Boulder to be able to, mm -hmm. to do that. Right. Right. Okay. Put her to a vote. All right. We've got a motion to go back to be able to, the chairman seeks permission to pursue bond rating with Doug Baudry, a member of CTAS. We've got Jim Bush has made the motion. Do we have a second? Kevin George seconds it. I thought we'd already done this. No, we never done it. It was never tabled. No, nobody voted to table. just passed over. We just, we've been hopping around this uh, agenda all night. We've gone to three no, in the morning. <laughs> Well, we'll Go ahead to appropriate money for it. For, right. Yeah. yeah. But we never. Well, now they're on the list. Go ahead and do it. That's right. Yes. Mark Burke. Yes. Wait, was Wait a minute. I got a question. Uh, Kevin. Okay. Before we get to voting, there's some discrepancy here about whether there's overstepping bounds by you and all this and that. Yes. And we found out from Frank, from uh, um, this Walker, that Moody does not care who sends it in. And Moody is the one that is doing it. Now, I've already went around and done most of the legwork. I've got the reports from uh, Donald Preston's office, from uh, uh, Wayne Prater's office. Um, there was a question on whether or not there were going to be any other um, long-term uh, improvements being made, and there's not. Does the state of Tennessee care who does it? No. No. Because that is, that, that walker is. walker is the state. Okay. Wow. Wait a minute. Call the roll. What about a county executive? You got anything to say, Matt? I wasn't, con I wasn't saying this in the area about going. That's the reason I didn't want to have anything to do with it. Um, and that's where the mistake was made. I still we need communication. Wait, he Mike's talking. Hold on. I still, I've talked to the insurance company, and they say um, on their that they do not look for a bond rating now. They're talking about a, a bond data, bond insurance. I, you know, I don't know what exactly what he's talking about. The problem. I know more about it before I endorsed it or said anything against it. The 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 way that it came to this right now, Jimmy, is is fact is that that when Mike was filling it out, he said he wrote them said I filled out most of the questions, but the rest of it's going to take a lot of time which I don't have the time or the staff to do. And that's what they went, ended up with, Mr. Walker did. That's when he emailed me and said, hey, it's stopped. And I said, we don't want it stopped. We want to be able to go and have a good bond rating. And that's where uh, we've been. All, all Bob is, uh, is asking for is permission for him to continue with what we with Mr. Walker, right. Yeah. I mean, we, we approved Mike to do it. and. Now he's just asking for him to be able to take the ball and keep running. Oh, I, I wish fine. you would follow me around all the time because you make it so simple. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's easy for me. I'm, I'm simple. <laughs> okay, here we go. <coughs> all right. All right, Mark Barger, he voted for Russell Reed. Yes. Todd Allensworth. I'd like to know more about it, but I'm going to go ahead and, and vote yes. Jimmy Mangos. I'd like to know more too, but I'll vote yes. There you go. Jim Bush? Yes. Kevin George? Yes. Clint Higgins? Yes. Tony Neal? Yes. Kevin Cunningham? Yes. Bob Stutz? Yes. Okay, now. Now let's go back to the far trip. We did something, y'all. <laughs> we accomplished something. I appreciate it. Let's, let's go back to the far trucks now, Jim. All right. Now we've got we've got everything set for a bond. Then we're going to go ahead and try to get our cheapest rates that we got. Now, we're going to have to have two trucks. And Kevin, I understand what you're saying. 
about the fire committee. Okay? But, I mean, you know, if, if somebody's got a truck blowed up and ain't, ain't working. Yeah, man. Yes? We have got the extra fire truck. We have more towns, new trucks are fixed now. It's been broke down. Okay. But because we got it fixed, we have got a fire truck that we can send down there for them to use during the repair or whatever happens. We can do so. I don't know why it's been done. Are you committing to that, Grady? Huh? Are you committing to this? Are you committing to that, that we'll send it to Gasway, Gasway until we can solve something? I will send it to it if I can. I mean, if something else don't happen. Well, some, if some Town truck breaks down again, we may have to go get it because Motown has So say so how good are we if we don't have one when we need it? We I mean, need to have this plan going on and on start fixing it. I'm, right. I mean, I'm just saying, we, we have a fire truck how did you get an extra one? Mm, they fixed one. We, we kept the one that, that uh, Motown was using whenever they bought their, y'all bought them that other truck. I thought that was Ed safe. No, that's well, the tanker that's truck. That's the tanker. <laughs> they're talking, okay. They're talking about the fire truck. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're talking about their, their old pumper? Their old pumper. So what you're saying is, if more town truck breaks down again, they'll come get it, and we're out of the truck again. So if we have a fire call, possibility we had to do that. So if we have a fire call, we cannot go. We cannot do nothing. That's not fixing our problem. That's just a band-aid. Yeah, I. I think that is an argument for the fire board. That might be an option though until we can, until we get your truck. Till you get one, yeah. yeah. If, you, if you're going to get one, yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, you're not, you're not going to be able to have one here tomorrow. By the time you go to look, yeah. just if, if, <laughs> if we vote to get a truck, somebody's got to go look and make sure we get a good one, make sure we get the right one. Right. Reminds yeah. me of the Mox brothers. <laughs> you know? Oh. Okay, so what kind of money we're talking about for two trucks? 135. Yeah, that's the that's $65,000 allowance for a truck. Let me right. say one more thing. Probably, if we were recommending, we would move the truck to Gasway and take that better truck somewhere else. Well, I'm not happy with that. You might do it, but I'm not going to be happy with that. I mean, I said that's a possibility that we that's could do that. Yeah. 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 That's fireball, aren't you? Yeah. I'm going to ask for the fireball to work out. We've got to start somewhere else. We've, made, we've, we've run on our budget for 19 years now without having to <coughs> ask haven't have a budget amendment, has any more money for 19 years up till now. You know, so we've been doing it. Hey Grady, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Have y'all been able to get a quorum between your fire departments? Have we? Yeah. Ever? Oh, we do it. Uh, I'm gonna say 10 times a year. Have, yeah. Here lately, have you been able to get a quorum? Oh, yeah. Have you got a chairman? Yes. Who's the chairman? Okay. Okay, Jim. We're looking at two fire trucks. A hundred and what? Mm -hmm. Hundred thirty thousand. Yeah. We're having the other one paid off next month. Next, next month. month. Right? And how long we're we gonna run it for? Maybe a three year note. Three year note. Now we go ahead. You don't make it? All right. But if we do, I know I'll make this motion. I agree with Jim. We, I, I think everybody agrees we need two fire trucks. But, but now the fire board needs to, the power to say, hey, where they're going to go. Of course, I, common sense. Has it come through the budget committee? Down, they're going to get one. <laughs> Has it come through the budget committee? No, this no, don't have to. Bond, right? Why? Because we've got money in debt service yeah. that we've been buying fire trucks with, and so it's going to so be paid so off next month. So you're you saying that that, that is set aside? Yes. And that we don't have to agree, we don't have to send it Okay, makes sense. Right. Okay. So, so I'm all right. So I make a motion then. We buy the two <coughs> fire trucks, turn them on the fire board. The fire board distributes the trucks where they need it. Jimmy Mingle made a motion to buy two fire trucks. I right. second. Jim Bush seconds it. Uh, yes. That may really complicate. <laughs> to pass a three-year capital outlay note to be approved by the controller's office. <laughs> you don't have a resolution for 
And we can call a special meeting. You can do that. We got enough money to put a down payment on two trucks. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying we've got to have a resolution printed out and to send to the comptroller's office and get it approved. That's fine. You so we can call a special meeting for the If you pass it tonight, we will get you a resolution the way you pass it, and then you'll have to come back. Can we wait one month instead of calling a meeting? We'll put yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. If if you guys tend to, you guys tonight, my recommendation is you guys tend to tonight say, hey, we're, we're going to do, we're going to purchase two trucks or issue your debt next month right. when that thing drops off. Like he said, I can get, we can get a formal resolution drafted up for you, and after you guys vote on it as a commission, then it goes up to the comptroller for approval after it, and after. <coughs> The resolution. Well, after the resolution and you guys pass that debt policy, which means the according to your policy, your county debt has to review the loan before before you guys to make sure it complies with the debt policy. And then, so next, I, it, you can make a motion say next month we're going to vote to, to buy this with debt, but you couldn't buy it to say tomorrow. Right. No, uh, no, no. But it's so still going to be 20, at least a month. 22, y'all. Y'all can make sure all that complicated yeah, stuff gets done. Another thing with this is telling her, she we got rode, the county got rode up the years when we bought that truck because we didn't completely bid it. Since then, which, when I say completely bid, we put it to paper, do still bids, got to got um, They've changed the law where if we can get a used vehicle now, as long as we get, like, basically the Kelly Blue Book equivalent or a professional appraiser say the price that you're going to pay is within 10% of the net book value of this used asset. So that would be my recommendation is let's do something, I hate to say band aid, you know, like he says, for a few weeks and then let's go ahead and take care of it for a long time with a good truck. Do it good right. Truck. Take, do it right. Maybe take an extra week, take an extra month or so to make sure we do it right. But that we got the like like you said, but we do have an extra truck. I don't really understand if we've got the extra truck why it's not down there tonight. They told us when they got theirs back to the policy we wouldn't have it, but we had to go home. Grady, can you get it over there tomorrow? You go get it? They're gonna come get it tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Good day. <laughs> All right. Sounds like we need a motion for a down payment. Uh, need a motion. Jimmy? All right. No, me and Jimmy. That's going to be big. Motion. Motion. Huh? That's going to be big, ain't it? What? I'm going to get that truck. How much we're going to have to hide? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I don't know. Very good, brother. 10%? And this, this, we're. Jimmy Collin. I don't think If we get this other truck, the truck we got will have to go outside. We don't have room for put one truck. If it ain't worth fixing, it's not worth fixing. It ain't worth putting under the bed. Oh, well, we'll sell it to the county. Yeah, well, let's scrap it. Put, it put, it put, it put, put that money towards the truck. That's the whole point, right? Okay. Well, we was talking about what to do with the old truck. With it, the, the whole principle be let's not just let them sit there and oh rust out. out. Well, do something and sell them. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, let the fire board decide. But when the money comes exactly. back, it goes back to general well, fund. Exactly. <coughs> Not exactly. general right. fund. Yeah, we want the money back. Right. Let me say this. Fireball still may decide to fix their truck. Let them have it back. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> no, we're not going there. Whoa, whoa. That's we're what we talked about a minute ago, though. Listen. You either, they either have to. <laughs> now, the hold on a second. Hold on. Let's, let's get this. We're giving you a chance to get two new trucks and you turn it down. Okay, then, then we're not going to fix it then, right? I'm saying we've got trucks that's older and in worse shape possible. Possible. Older and in worse shape than that truck. We stay on our plan. I have done what I've been asked to do. And June, you're telling me that you want to fix my old truck and give it back to us. And here I've done all the research and, and, and came to the commission and done everything I've been asked to do. I don't think that's right. I'm not telling you anything. I'm telling you far, far more about what I'm doing. All right, listen, Jim. All right. Hold on. Wait a minute. 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 Hold on. This, All right. this is not an argument right this, now, this Karen. Is for the Lord. Lord. Oh, my God. <laughs> Clint had done a lot of homework to be able to get this. Well, I, I'd help ask Doug and Doug to help me out. I can't. Well, I understand that. Right. He's there to be used. Use him. Yep. <laughs> 
West Side. Bobby, West what was the motion? West Side was the other, yeah. <laughs> okay. To buy two fire trucks. And let the fire board, but we can't do that without a resolution? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're going to have to amend that, evidently. <laughs> Hold on. That's your... <laughs> We're going to amend it. One goes to West Side automatic, right? They've been asking for a truck for over a year, yeah, close to a year now. Okay, nothing goes together. Well, I thought, what's the point of having, like Kevin said? Well, <laughs> I thought you was going to turn it over to the fire board and let them decide what to do with it. We can't get a quorum with it. Okay. Can I make a motion with it? Then, you know, then I, it goes I, really, I <laughs> you know this, this arguing, I think, we're wasting their time, too, besides ours. Um, really, please. We, uh, we started out we started out this whole year focused, and now we're arguing. No, we're not arguing. We're discussing. We're discussing. <laughs> There's a we're discussing difference. Loudly. And we've made progress. We've made progress. Okay. <laughs> now, is that all right with y'all? What? To dictate where they go. Yes, because they can't say. The, the two people that got away at West Side were the ones that wanted to get right away. Let's go with it. Wait a minute. Bobby. Bobby's trying to say something. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Bob. You need to make the motion, but one goes to Gasway and one goes to the West Side. Exactly. Who's been wanting them? Exactly. That's what he's doing. He's amending his emotion to make that. Right. We need four more towns. You did that. You bought it. Four more towns. Specifically four more towns. And, and you bought it specifically for more towns. So you can do the same thing now. Okay. Well, ultimately, it's our stuff. That's it. You got, got some right. Motions up. Let, let you talk. What about a resolution? We have the fire well, board that, that already comes voted for West Side. We're in the process of going uh, through mm -hmm. and the resolution. You know, we, 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 we're not, we haven't voted for Gathaway to get a truck. Now, I'm not saying we won't vote for them to get a truck, but I'm just saying if somebody else we're not is going to vote, they're not going to vote. The motor boss is between to. now and tomorrow, and we can fix Gathaway's truck from the we years for like the fire a few years or whatever. We might do that. That might happen. I'm not saying it will. I'm saying it could happen. Anything can happen. You know. Let's vote. Question. Jimmy Williams has a question before yeah. we get into that. What I want to ask is this. Freddie, will y'all fix this truck if it can be fixed? Will we fix it? Yeah. Well, we will try to fix it. We will try to fix it. We've got money in the That's right. We've got money in the truck. truck. If you fix this truck, yeah. you'll come and get it and fix it and bring it up. We can solve it. I mean, so yeah, we can solve it. Well, let question. Chief, you'll have to take the question That's on the table. Job. Okay, Grady. That. Thank you. Go ahead. Motion's been made <laughs> to put a down second. payment down on these vehicles and to designate where they oh, go. No, 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 no. That no. motion needs to be made that we will vote on the resolution next month. So that motion to needs to be made because be the resolution has to be voted on first, and then it has to go. So one more thing: all we're doing is making a vote. On, we're voting on the, to make a resolution. What you're saying? That's right. Yeah. Vote right. by right. next month. Right. right. Because of the three-year capital outlay deal. And we're dictating where they're going. <laughs> exactly. But I don't understand, and I hate to muddy the water any more than it's already muddied. Me too. But yeah, on, if, ahead, if they're going to move a truck from Moortown down to cover Gasaway until they can fix Gasaway's truck and they've got the money in the fire board budget to fix it, why don't they just fix it? If they're going to fix it anyway, I think Jimmy agrees with me on that. Why do we need to buy two trucks? They've got that one to cover now. Take the money out of the fire board budget, fix Gasaway's truck, and everybody's happy. You well, still got an old truck in the west side. Maybe. Yeah, but what's the sense in buying two trucks if they're going to turn right around and fix the junk one anyway? I, I agree on that. That's like me buying a new brand new car and then fixing yours up. You're well, that's what I'm right. saying, right? If they're going to fix it, there's no need us buying it. Exactly. Them. If you're gonna, but if you're going to take it away, if you're going to take the power out of the committee, then you need to vote on this and then vote to disband the committee. Oh, we spent fifty-three hundred dollars. If we buy them and we make the decision, that's where they go, will it not? If, yes. we, if we say they're going here, they're going there, exactly. right? We can dictate that. We can dictate oh. that. We did more. And if it's our truck, if they fix it, we can try and sell it. Correct? Exactly. That's the one he talked about. That's right. Exactly. We can pass it. If you're fixing it, junk it if we want. Well, you if you're if you're making it in the motion, made a bit that the old truck that gas waste to my service goes, it's scrapped, yeah, exactly. and that money goes back, goes back to the future. Yeah. Yeah. I'm behind you 100%. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's what make it. We can make the motion as far as that goes. Let her rip, Tater Chief. Now, you got all this damn. Ransom's on the I don't know.
<laughs> we still got more business, you know that. Oh, I know. <laughs> will, you, will you withdraw your motion? All right, we're going to amend it and withdraw that motion. He withdrew his motion. <laughs> and we're going to make a new one. I'll, okay. <laughs> now, Jim's going to make one. I'll make a motion <laughs> that we purchase two trucks. They'll be designated to go to Gasway and Westside. West and Westside. West now, the else? old truck that is tore down in Gasaway is considered salvage, and then whatever that we can salvage out of it will go into general fund, and then we scrap the rest. I second the motion. All right, vote on it. What's the resolution for? Right. Yeah. Right That's, the That's, That's the draft of the resolution. That's the draft of the resolution right there. Oh. Did you get that, Cynthia? Oh. <laughs> 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 okay, Bobby. Uh, we, two new trucks. One goes to Gasway, one to West Side, and take the money in that you Salvage out. Jump Salvage old out truck. and go to the general fund. Is that right? That's, That's what it's going to be. Yes. Jim Bush made the motion to have a second. Todd Hollingsworth. Uh, Mark Burton. <laughs> yes. Russell Reed. Yes. Todd Hollingsworth. Yes. Jimmy Mason. Yes. Jim Bush. Yes. Kevin George. Yes. Ben Higgins. Yes. Tony Neal. Yes. Kevin Yes. Yes. <laughs> all right. Since since a lot of y'all didn't want to vote on the county moving stuff over here to Ron Fire Place because you didn't spend money on the bond and you didn't since you've spent all that money now, would y'all reconsider that idea? Sure will if somebody brings it back up. Uh, you know, I, and that was the whole thing and it was well, it was well, it was nothing. It was a matter of principle, and I think you understand where I'm coming from. Well, then. All right, then I'll back up. And I'll make a motion. We rent this over here, and we move the uh, offices downstairs over to across the street to the other your office. Which office is specific? Uh, I think we're moving the register of deeds. Wayne Prater. Uh, I thought Donald, Wayne Donald Preston. I thought Wayne was going to stay here because of the. With the no, I think he's moving Mike out too. You got evicted, I think. Listen, if you go <laughs> to, uh, if it costs twenty five hundred to move one office's computer, that's ten thousand dollars for four offices just moving computers. Yeah. Well. Plus the monthly rent. Plus the. Computer. Well, he can. Uh, yes. You'd be better yeah, off moving the land in them over there, and you don't have one set of computers. Woo! So. You gonna carry the stuff over here in the rain? Am I? Yeah, no, I didn't think so. Can we get us one of the keys? <laughs> Let's get a slingshot. When they line up over there, what we done settled that? Four thousand four hundred feet. Square feet. Four thousand four hundred feet. Four thousand four hundred feet. It's actually forty-eight hundred square feet, and it has a, a, a kitchen and everything else. And you can't build in that. You're going to have to build from it. So that's forty thousand, not four thousand. What? Okay, Jim. Now, motion's been made by Kevin Mooneyham. Now, who's moving for it? You know, we don't have to tell who's going to move tonight. No, okay. So we can figure it out whenever we see the space. We're approving to rent a building. Right. We are going, we're, we're making a motion to rent the Canning Courier. Okay. We can get the stuff out of the floor in the basement, take over there. You know, and help yeah, them. and whatever we, we need to do cost. right now. We don't know what it's going to cost to renovate it. We don't know well, it won't take nothing if you just put books over there, but eventually we'd like to put people over there. I thought of a higher rent for just storage, though, Bob. You've already paid for it. You know, no, you know that's, that's <laughs> we cannot sit still. Well, I agree, we just but if you're going to use it for a storage, Joe, that's... Diane. We have to do well. These, our old records really need a place to go. Yeah, where are you? And even if we just put old records over there for the time being, we'll be nice. yeah, You put yours in old jail right now? Yeah, and if we don't have time to go over there and organize it like it should be. Right. But like Bobby's old books, I mean, you know, we need to take care of all those. And Debbie's and mm -hmm. Lynn's got old books. Right. Because everybody's got old books. You know? So maybe by taking, uh, are you saying by taking all the records over there that we would clear up that? Problem in the basement. Well, they, yeah, because I got one room that's just full of those. Stuff. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's what we have to do. <coughs> How about over at the school board building? Is there not nothing over there we can use for storage? That's an awful big building over. 
Yeah. Give it up, Tony. Mm -hmm. I'm, I swear. Well, I mean, you know, let's. let's <laughs> We have got a motion. Tree, but it's, let's let's go. It's, we got a motion to rent the Canning Courier building <coughs> for at least well, the next he two years. The renter, but no. Well, if he has it, he can tell us. Is there a second? You got your boss on speed dial. Yes, I will. Can I say something? Yeah, please. Jerry Preston, do you come over there at Susan's? request she wanted a professional to look and see if it was doable when they were considering going over there and he did not give he did not draw up any kind of plans and did not give numbers but said it would be the best idea and not a lot of expense at all because we see we have we have one bathroom that's got two stalls in it and then we have another one and then there's a dark room it already has plumbing in it. So Terry suggested we take the dark room door off and make it just a little bit wider and have uh, a handicap back front. And he said, more or less, you'd be foolish to turn it down because all you'd have to do is put up some walls. The, the flooding in our basement, and there was a lot of stuff stored in there. The Regents Bank people told us they told us that the mold was not active, but they were wanting to clear it up. And when they went in there um, over the weekend, they said that all that dampness, all that whatever you call it, bacteria, mold, fungus, or whatever it is, was coming through the basement and going up through our bed work and coming out just like here. And there was black on, on that they're going to have all that fixed and they were talking about it being bad for the hell. Now if it's bad over there, it's going to be bad over here for the dampness and the mold. Okay. Thank you. We've got a motion to rent the Cannon Courier building. Can you keep going and did it? Yes. Do I hear a second? Yes. We have a second. By Russell Reed, the man from Readable. Call the roll. Only one. Hard heart. Yes. Russell Reed. Yes. Todd Osbury. Yes. Jimmy Mangum. Nope. Tim Bush. Yes. Kevin George. I pass. Glenn Higgins. Yes. Tony Neal. No. Kevin Mooneyham. Yes. Bob Tetzer. Yes. All right. Thank you. And what did you do about the other one? The other one talked good about me on the motion we made and voted on <laughs> earlier. Is it, is it just overwrote, over that? Over yeah. It? Yeah. How do you do that, Bobby? We already made one, one scratch at it. That well, that motion was to move offices. This was that motion was to move offices. This office, this motion was just to rent the building. Yes, not to that's move. what it was. Not to move anything. Just we leave. haven't decided on that. We we turned down moving for right now. now. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is rent it for space. Hopefully, Thea Prince, come on forward. Come on down. Make it short. Cause like a short sweet. Yeah, <laughs> make it short. <laughs> My turn. Yeah, I've got to work tomorrow. Okay. You missed your turn two hours ago. I know. I'll try to do faster. Um, I appreciate you all living through your growing pains because I believe it's in the right direction. I, uh, our committee, our study, salary study committee was to uh, give you a report tonight. And this will be a brief one because at the last meeting we requested you're okay to uh, ask for RFPs uh, in the anticipation of a private hall or a private entity perhaps being willing to take take on the whole our whole solid waste uh, entity at a cost savings but this is what i typed up so i'll read it and then then you're done with me our solid waste study group has met several times in the last two and a half months our directives were to study the current operating costs 
to seek ways to improve recycling, to review the solid waste operations regarding the state law com uh, compliance, and then to report back. Our five-member committee has been joined by County Executive Gannon and uh, Chairperson Stetzel, along with the CTASC experts, I called you an expert, uh, Doug Bonery and Kim Rea. Uh, they have two, uh, two d individual specialties, but we can use both of them, the financial and, the, and in the trenches. Uh, we have looked at our past five years, where we are now, and where we'd like to see our future. Executive Gannon is, on, is in contact and with, is in contract talks, I believe this is still accurate, with the Middle Point Landfill in anticipation of uh, better rates. And uh, this is not making anything official, this is just looking at an option. Uh, our transfer station is presently operated by the county. It needs renovation and modernization. The equipment is old and has been repaired many times. Our first suggestion, which was approved at the last meeting, as I mentioned, our first suggestion to you all is to have an RFP, that's a request for proposal, prepared by private management. This would provide the renovation, or could, new equi equipment, no, no new equipment burden, uh, uh, no hauling on our own, uh, on our part, and possibly they would, we would want, choose to include a recycling process. Uh, but this is a minimum of two year, a two month deal, just to get the paperwork where, we, where our committee thinks is, uh, where, where it should go and to get the paperwork out to the entities that are willing to listen to us. That's why, meanwhile, I'd like to ask you all to uh, allow our committee to remain active through the duration, and we'd like to uh, visit a current, our committee would like to visit a currently operating transfer station so we can get the feel and identify things that we think we need or don't need, but see it, see how it works. We need to determine our solid waste and our recycling uh, waste stream just to see what we're working with. Uh, we, need, we need to look at our funding options and our resources both with uh, the residents in our community and to the business sector, including, and we need to look at other counties and their best practices. It, it may only makes sense if somebody's done it and they're doing it right and, and we can use that knowledge and experience to take advantage of it too. <coughs> As ever, any input from anyone and everyone is certainly appreciated because we're just out there in the trenches. We had uh, originally told them that we wanted to report to us at in the March meeting, which this is it right here. And uh, evidently she wants to be able to continue on with this study, uh, which I believe would be a good idea. And the uh, RFP, right, yes. the request, uh, the state, if I'm right, Kim, uh, Kim from task uh -huh. Okay, she is the one that's actually putting together uh, the um, bid type right. information to see who would bid on this but what it from starts, the state level. What it starts with before before you set put something out is what to put out, and that so that's something we would want to look at that that it's not complicated because we aren't, but that it, it will be fair fair for everyone and doable. The the what's a challenge um, are things like would a transfer station want to accommodate three surrounding counties? Uh, would they would they just would we want somebody that just manages us? We uh, the reason this is even up come up to for possibility is that we aren't just a convenience center up there. We're what the state uh, identified as a transfer station. Transfer station. We pay a, a, a larger fee each year to maintain that maintain maintain that de designation. And so uh, so I'm asking that we can continue with our work and report back uh, when we and have right something. now the hours of operation are very convenient and have been expanded. We wouldn't want to lose that either would we would negotiate that. You'd have to negotiate everything. everything. Yes, sir. If you didn't like if you didn't like the basic menu, you know, or if you didn't like the whole thing, then choose what you want. We hope they would want to choose us, you know, to make 
But when you're in business to make a profit, uh, it's worked very well for some places and not for others. So we're just looking at options. Right, and that's what the report from this Kim Rhea would do. And I think that uh, I've been in on their meetings and everything else, just a minute, Paul. I've been in on their meetings um, uh, and, and seen how efficient that they work, and we have uh, uh, committee, uh, commission members that are part of that. And I really appreciate, because if you remember, I. I just threw it on her without asking her, and she's done a great job, yeah. so I appreciate I that. that yeah, I remember it too, so. Paul. How many tons of waste do we generate a day from Kevin County? You're going to know better a day than I am. I know a year is about 7,000. Okay, 7,000 tons was 7, last year. Tons. It comes out to, what did we say, a little over a thousand, a ton, a little over half a ton per, no. probably adult person. We have very little uh, available with recycling. Um, in okay, what's the cost of the middle point to dump that ton per ton? I didn't bring any of those. Uh, I did bring them. Bucks. I did bring them. 39, 30, 35 30, 90 per ton right now, but they've 90. agreed to come down to. Well, I think you can go straight there. <laughs> I'm going to go straight there. We're going to get out there now. I didn't hear. I didn't hear, know that. I didn't hear the last that. thing. I'm not paying that at all right now. That's the reason I'm asking these questions. Okay, I don't how much know. Is your I'm sorry, I don't how know. How much is your haul per day? How much is a load of waste going to the middle point per day? 220. Tons. 220 How many per tons you send it on each load per day? I will, I will gladly give, give you all okay, those things. That's fine. I can give yeah. you like, And I would love to talk to you. Give me your number, email, I'll email it. And get okay, it I have them in my so hand. Let's figure out how much pound, cost per pounds it costs us to haul it. Then let's figure out how much it costs us as a bill point to dispose of it. Right. Well, I appreciate you not getting mad at her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because she's a volunteer. <laughs> yeah, and she'll you, I you love, get with me. I honestly would love your input because I, I need to. I'll for you. I'll roll for the camera. Okay. From what? I'll roll for the camera. You send some paperwork out. I didn't hear you. What? I'll sign some paperwork for you when you send it out. Then roll for the county some paperwork. What about okay. Rutherford County's paperwork? That's right. You can <laughs> okay. talk to them after this. All right. Okay. Um, I make a motion we continue this com this yeah. solid waste right. committee. I second. All right. All in favor. All in favor. Uh, uh, those opposed. Well, you got our permission. You should also know that there's also a Plan B and a Plan C that we could do. Maybe yeah. we're maybe we would decide that we'd like to just have the state help us with a renovation on our own and that we're happy with the hauling and we're happy with what it, the negotiation. But we're just looking. Thank right. you very much. Thank you, Ms. Lee. Okay, next. We have a resolution. You looked over the barber and you were concerned about it, but this is not uh, something that you were concerned about tonight. I mean, after reading it. Okay, well, I understand that, but, she, but this has nothing that, that okay. All right, let me, let me read this and so people can hear it too. It says, resolution to form a committee to draft a private act to centralize financial management in Cannon County, Tennessee. Whereas in the past five years, the Comptroller of the State of Tennessee has issued annual financial audits of the government of Cannon County, Tennessee, and these audits have had a commute cumulative, cumulative uh, total of 70 audit findings and recommendations and whereas that the majority of the audit finding detail de detail deficiencies in purchasing budgeting and accounting procedures and several of these audit findings are significant in recurring in nature and according to the state's comptroller audit reports has increased the risk of fraud waste and abuse of our county tax funds and whereas that the state comptroller has recommended in the audit reports for several years that Cannon County create a centralized system of accounting, budgeting, and purchasing by either the financial management system of 1981 or by private act. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Cannon County Legislative Body meeting in regular session at Woodbury, Tennessee on the 13th day of March 2012 that Section 1, the County County Commission creates a committee of five county commissioners, one commissioner from each district, to draft a private act that will create a centralized system of accounting, budgeting, and purchasing of all funds held by the county trustee, exclusive of the trustee's fee account. 
The committee will consult with the University of Tennessee, University of Tennessee County Technical Assistance Service as the county attorney uh, for the assistance with the drafting of the private act. Excuse me. <coughs> that the private act stipulates that the county finance director will report to and be hired and or terminated by the county finance committee whose membership will be made up exclusively of one county commission from each of the commission districts of the county. Section 3, that the committee strives to have the private act drafted, reviewed by the county attorney and placed on the agenda of the regular county commission meeting in September 2012. Section four, that upon passage by two thirds majority of the county commission, that the county com commission chairman requests our state representative to carry this bill before the state legislature in the next legislative session, the public welfare requiring it. Okay, did everybody understand that? What we're trying to do tonight is to, uh, is to elect and support a committee that will dra draw up a private act to go before the Tennessee legislature um, next year. As I said earlier, I met with an auditor today, and she said that they never did recommend this as a cost-saving measure because it will not save you any money. It will cost us money, probably a hundred thousand more dollars. Probably. Probably, because you're going to have five people here hiring somebody that's a CPA or, or the, the equivalent and they're not going to come working for you for nothing. We've already got the manpower to do it. Small counties our size, most of them don't have this. Did you get the same, did you get the same audit that we the, got? She said that they have to put that in there. The, the audit and, and our audit findings are less than they were last year and the school system didn't get any audit findings. I'm talking about the audit that shows all yes, these discrepancies in it. I spoke to her face to face today and she had no problem with our audit. <coughs> okay, well. And she's, and she's now working on the next one. See, that's the one that was almost a year old now. Well, who did this audit? She did. Then why did she put Canning County because should adopt the central system of accounting, budgeting, because and purchasing? Because the comptroller says that, but they never do say that that will save us money. And she said, it won't save you any money now. And small counties our size do not usually do that because it will cost you more than it will well, make. How much did Bedford County save by going to this, Doug? Bedford County is a whole lot bigger than we are. Well, how much did they save? Several million dollars. The first year. Let, let after we've after, been written up 70 times for the same thing and then we and have this years, and have then we have the special investigation audit that comes down and shows that we're missing money well that was taken care of by uh, terminating an employee she had to be seen I don't think she was terminated she was laid off wasn't she no she filed a leave after a leave after so oh, okay I'm just telling you what the auditor said to me this very day okay she said, I have to put that in there because the comptroller says it. Yes, that's, that's You don't the best think it's a good idea? Practices. No, I don't. I think we need to be better stewards of the people's money than to, to go out here and have five people hiring somebody else that is a, a high paid uh, employee to, Who said to do this. Hire somebody. You'd have to. Yeah, we'll have to hire somebody. Well, I mean, you know, we've got one now that does the books and everything. Like that. We've got people that are doing this same thing right now. And those same, and those people will be part of that finance office. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Hey, if we wait a couple of years, we probably won't have to do nothing. The state's going to like already us. Yeah. Trying to implement it now. I mean, are, so I, I can't. Away. I can't imagine after after every one of us getting this in the mail. Right. That I mean, we don't every, do something. Everybody got this in the mail. Mm -hmm. How could you not? How can you argue? Again, I talked up. to her face to face today. Was she part of this? She, was. Was, she, she was, was. was she part of the fraud audit? The fraud audit? I don't know the answer to that. That's, but that is a the, that is the, a thing the for the fraud law audit. Enforcement if if for care. no other reason. No, no, Mark. That is not law enforcement. That is county commission. We are the stewards of people's money. Right. And, and this is the way that I, I think that we might be able to take care of that that's money. That's what I'm trying to be. I, I, I think. Uh, 
I make the motion we that we pass that resolution. Okay. And we I have. think the commission I think the commission ought to ought to say what they think. Yeah, Barbara. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Committee, I don't know if any other members are present. Didn't y'all form an audit committee to study the audit and then write, recommend, make recommendations to you? Right. That's right. Or and they haven't even let them, you got, need to let them do their job. We have first. the chairman right here of the audit committee, uh, Mr. Glenn Steakley. Glenn, could, do you have anything on input on this? Uh, yes, the, the budget audit committee is currently reviewing the, uh, the state comptroller's findings. And as soon as we find out where we are and how we got there, then we're going to meet with the auditor and, and the controller's office and then uh, determine which avenue we take at that point. Okay. And do you know how long that will take? Uh, I do not know exactly how long it will take, just, just as soon as the other four audit members feel comfortable in coming in and being in a position where they can make decisions of good decisions. Okay. We understand the importance, but we also understand the importance of making good decisions. Good decisions, right. And that's exactly what we named the audit committee for. So let, uh, let, let them, let them do no. so, so we need so to put this off to the next We need to put it off. Let's just table it then. Yeah. Yeah. We'll so, table it so and you don't think this is a good motion. idea? That's all I want to know, Mark. Do you think this is, that this, we need to have this? For our size county, I, I have not been convinced of it yet because the auditor told me today what she told me. One auditor told you. The auditor that audited our books. What's her name? I don't remember her name. I can't. From Spencer Dizzy. Uh, uh, what's her name? What's her name, Mike? You know with her more than I do. Melody. I'd say yes. Yeah. Barbara. Barbara, you had Barbara, you had your hand up. Go ahead. <laughs> Just some food for thought. Uh, I guess my first question is: Did legal counsel draft that resolution, or were they? Consulted? They were involved. That was. They were consulted. Okay. I, I asked that. for the resolution. I asked Doug to draft it, and uh, he got with the law. That resolution, according to my understanding of uh, centralized accounting. Let me go back to the auditor's recommendation. It is a recommendation. They have to make recommendations. Yeah, but we want so, to make it right, real. So when you act on a recommendation, then for the next 10 years, they're going to have another recommendation. I just want you to know that that you're going to feel like you're going to have to act. We should ignore that out for food for thought. Uh, are you going to include all entities in the centralized accounting? Yes, it would be. All right. So right now, I know of two that do not run, that Diane does not handle everything. Am I correct? Are there only two? The highway department school system? Yes. yes. Everybody. Okay, but that's the only two entities right now that don't run their their bookkeeping through the county executive's office, that's right. right? Okay, all right. So will any entity have the right or the opportunity to opt out of this? No. 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 Okay. Why would they uh, want to? According to my interpretation or, or just my recent research, because I'm not through researching, but... Uh, your timeline seems to be uh, faulty because you're going to you're doing a resolution you've already said you didn't go through your audit committee but you're going to vote on it on September it's my understanding that you have to do a year of study before you can do this what what where do you get that understanding from from my finance consultant which is and the, I know that Warren County, which is the which is the guy the that comes in and does last your books, year and they've been in a year study and they don't even start if, it. If July. if we have a centralized finance office, if if we do this and we have one, will your financial consult consultant still be doing your finances? He will be still be our consultant. But we do our finances. But your, he will the still finances. Be our no, consultant. he's saying if we do this. If we do oh, this, yeah. he'll, he's assigned to a school system, not to a centralized. But your county. bookkeeper will be under the central finance office. Mm, that depends. If, that's my next concern. I, I guess uh, my question is that your consultant uh, is is consulting with the idea that he may be out of a job if we do this. 
No. No. He's hired by the state of Tennessee. He has 26 systems. He already has probably 20 systems that have centralized accounting now. And I know the legislature is, is looking at a bill that the comptroller asked for. And I know that that would make their job a whole lot easier because they only go to one office to do all of their auditing. They don't have to go all over their county or like come over to our office and go to the highway department. They would just all have it in one office. So that would go into effect if passed in 2017. Okay. Uh, our finance consultant is not going to be out of a job if you go to centralized accounting because I can name several counties right now that but will he, he, still, can, he still consults with. He's, but he'll still be, con, still, you'll still be using him if we do this. Pardon? Will you still be using him if we do this? Sure. He's assigned to us. Okay. There will still be questions. Now, you said something about my people would be part of this. Are you saying you're going to take all of our bookkeepers and put them in one office? We're not saying that. No, not, okay. not all of them. Because my bookkeepers aren't, they do everything, they do a lot of stuff. So the cost factor to me, if I'm going to have to pay a bookkeeper that goes to centralized accounting, I'm still, still going to probably have to hire people over there to double check and also to do the other work that these bookkeepers do. Okay, so the cost to me is going to be more, probably. No. All right, and then in your resolution, uh, <laughs> you mentioned the finance committee consisting exclusively of five commissioners. Right. My understanding that that finance committee would have a member of every department. Under an 81 act, yeah. it would. In that. Uh, this is under a private act, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. so. Under an 81 act, it would. The county executive, road director, and super school. Under, under the 81 act, it have the county executive, the school, board, school director, the highway department, highway department, county executive. And under private act, under this private act, it'll be the county finance department. department will be controlled by this commission. All right. So what do you foresee? What what do you foresee as being the structure of this finance department, and how we will operate? It? Everything that needs to be paid will be paid, will come through the finance, finance office. I understand that. Okay. So all POs, all payments, and all payroll. Right. I understand that. And what else? But what's our relationship to that? How is it going to be handled? Well, it's like I said, your, your bookkeeper will be in that finance office. Each, each of the three main main departments will have a bookkeeper in that finance office under a finance director and that finance director will answer to this to the five committee member where committee will they members. be housed that's well, we just rented we just three. rented a building <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right might as well use it i for mean something. everybody that has a lot of different scenarios are out there for centralized accounts Correct. Because I've been checking the school system. State, and so they you? operate in different ways. And the school system employees do more work in some than in others. So I just wanted to know how you envisioned, you know, they would operate. State so what you said about Warren County again. I didn't understand that completely. Warren County voted last summer, last July, August. to do centralized accounting. And that was something else. It sounded like in your resolution that you would vote in September immediately send it to the legislature and then they get it passed, you would enact it. Happy they are. It's my understanding you had to have a year of study to enact it. And I, I didn't get as far as saying if that had to be before the private act or before you after the private act that you put it to, to operation. But one county has taken a year to put it to operation. You got eight, you actually you've got 18 months once you vote on it and you pass it two-thirds majority you've got 18 months it has to be implemented in 18 months has to be that system and they go to it January or June 31st is when they start they're under the uh, 81 act is when they start that is it the uh, Warren County you don't about? have to have a private act though through the legislature to uh, issue uh, purchase orders and give uh, strict instructions to is that how we do it now 
That's I'm how saying, we do it now. Exactly. I say we don't have to do that to issue purchase orders and give strict instructions to any bookkeeper that's under the purvey of the of the school system, the highway department, anybody else. They need to be, you know. Mark, uh, is it just the money that you talk about we're going to be taking on? Is that the only reason why you're opposed to it? Well, that's one. What else? Well, just uh, just like Barbara said, that well, they've got federal money coming in over there for the food system. The, the food. We stuff. have three bookkeepers. Got, we have federal. We have food service. We have general purpose. They do it in all the other counties, right? You just said that they they do it they in other counties. They have done it in a lot of counties, but in the school system, there are a lot of issues. So I want to know how it's going to operate. I cannot tell you that. We've got right to now. have a plan. I cannot tell you that. And. I, I don't mean, know that anybody, but maybe you know, there are a lot um, of problems. A financial place would be they, able to tell. I don't think any other. You find the bills how many other counties our size like are doing centralized? The counties our size are doing this. I don't. I couldn't give you all those. According to TCSA, forty-one counties in the state do not do it. So there you go. Here. Forty-one do not do it. Do here not here. do it. And they are fixing. Yeah, that means 54. Look, they are yeah. fixing to make us do it. And that 41 is the biggest ones now. The big, you know, the, the big counties. That's 41. It don't. That's what I mean. The, the ones that do are the big ones. And, and you know, if we, I wouldn't be as opposed to going back to the 81 thing as I am having a private act. This actually works a little more efficient than the 81 the act. Private act is like less costly. Authority who says goes on. <laughs> and that's going to get you a political appointment of five people that's just going to be a, a basket case. We're going to be appointed by this commission. Who else do we elect? We let the people decide to elect people, not the us. The people elected us. That's right. But that's that, right. Taking five of us out and having us hire a financial person is a little bit different. What's different is that and... and uh, Superintendent of schools. Well, I think the superintendent ought to be elected by the people, as far as I'm concerned. Well, yeah. that's, that's the way it is. Well, without the private act, you'll have the director of schools, the county executive, and the road superintendent. That'd be the three that will be on, plus two more. And how are those two selected? I I don't know. I can't find it anymore. You it's know, in, it's in that 81 Act. Who's in that? Isn't that right? The 81 Act. Yeah. You know, the 81 Act will have a director of schools, county executive, and road superintendent, and then you'd have uh, five more appointed members. And, if and, the, and the director of finance and would be on that as well. And if you operate under the 1981 Act, Barbara can opt out of it. If it's detrimental to schools. I mean, it's clear that almost half of the counties don't do it. You Talk can't overlook that, Mark. We cannot overlook that. We're being lambasted in no, the paper. We, we are too. We're being lambasted in the paper and no, everywhere else, aren't. saying that the county hey. commission is the reason why we're at uh, that 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 these things were paid, and that's not no, right. Not. And the county, the the paper even said one of them that we were already taking uh, steps to correct it. The one about having an audit committee, isn't that right? No, he had blog. That's what the, <laughs> that's what the paper said. It said we were already correcting one of them on right there. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, we're talking good. about the people that comment on it. Let the audit committee do their job first. We are going. We've already decided, just about decided that. Well, I make like the motion we pass it. We're going to do what? Pass, <laughs> pass the resolution. How are we going to? Uh, all right. In all fairness, Kevin. We asked the audit committee to do this, and we also well, told them that we were not any, going to interfere we with them. We hadn't paid any attention to any other committee tonight. <laughs> I mean, seriously. <clears throat> do you want to wait a month and, and let them make a recommendation? I do. Let's table it for a month. Let yeah, let's say table it. I do. I'm not it. saying no to this. Let's table it and let them find out what they got to say about yeah. it. Yeah. They might say the same thing that we're saying. They might not. But that's what we, we appointed them to do. And and I can tell you they got a really good crew to do that. That's what I said a minute ago, too. I'm sorry. That's right. So I said the same thing a few minutes ago about the fire board. <laughs> that blends, this is different. I hope so. This is all... all uh, Bob, we got a motion on time. Are you... What? Glenn, yes. I can't guarantee you 
that you're going to be there in a month. That, that, the, that the committee is going to have the answers that you're looking for mm -hmm. in one month. Right. This this wasn't caused over one month's time. Right. And chances are you're not going to be able to find the root cause and, and make a determination on the counter of it in a month. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure I can tell you it's going to take over a month. Okay. All right, let me take care of this business first and then Kevin, I think we need to do something. You got a motion on the table? No, I mean, you we'll have a second. second. Died for lack of session. Okay. We will wait until the audit kit committee comes in. At that time, we'll bring this financial center uh, back up. I'll make a motion that we table this until we hear from the audit committee. Thank you. We need a I'll second, second on that. that. Second, yeah. All right. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? No. Okay. We got one no. We got opposed there, Bobby. All right. I don't know what we can do about a county medical examiner because if you're going to have a medical examiner, I'd rather it be a doctor. But the law doesn't really say that you have to be a doctor to be a, to, to say that you're dead. I've been looking at this today. Well, actually, I've been looking at it since you sent our Thank packet. you, Barbara. Since you sent our packet out, mm -hmm. I've talked to Dr. Rulin. Dr. And who? Dr. Rulin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been doing it for many years right. for nothing. You know, he's had a penance for, you know, just to cover gas and autopsies and such. Right. And uh, he's just ready to retire. He's done a really good job. Mm -hmm. uh, I would really like us to recognize him for that. Yeah. Uh, as far as a new medical examiner, I think a doctor is pretty much necessary for it. Right. And he can designate. Right now, the each paramedic is a deputy coroner, and I'm just letting everybody know this, and they can they can make. Well, good. Notes. But they're under Dr. Rulin. Oh. I have talked to Dr. Thomas, who is our medical director. Mm -hmm. That's different than the medical examiner. He is the one who oversees the ambulance service for all our rules and what we can do and what we can't do. And he has agreed that until we can find a, a new medical examiner that he will help us in making sure we can get the uh, proper documentation for death and, you know, take, uh, take care of all that. I talked to him this afternoon about that. Thank he you. said he did not want the medical examiner job, right? but that he would assist the ambulance service right now. Which would allow y'all Which Well, we had one time. this morning. We had a corner case this morning. Okay. And we that was still under Dr. Rulin until right now. Till right now when we accept uh, his uh, resignation. We accept yeah. his resignation. But Dr. Thomas, he's agreed to uh, sign death certificates and such. We're going to have to have somebody that will do that, though. Yeah. Did Dr. Rulin make any kind of recommendations? Or? No. He's done. Yeah, he. <laughs> I he talked to him too, years. Todd, the, the other day, and he recommended that we ask Jeff Todd or Mike Thomas is his two recommendations and he also said that he would he's still the ME until June the 1st that he's gonna continue to do it till then so we've got a little bit of time but he also said that he would like to continue to do the investigation part of it that he liked that and mm -hmm. he would enjoy doing that if we would allow him to do that that's the criminal I think that'd be also the criminal lead, lead, and lead that up to the sheriff up there too. So. Right. We're gonna have to talk to all the departments involved. He said, just get a doctor, you know, that would be willing to sign off on the death certificates and I stuff like that. Today, yeah. You know, I also talked to the uh, other two counties, to DeKalb and Warren County. Warren County is sending part of their ambulance EMTs to St. Louis for training to become medical examiner investigators and he said that way they were sending one off each shift that way they'd have one available anytime because there was always an EMT on service you know on, on their shifts they're doing that in Warren County and um, the one in Smithville the Dr. Walls is their medical examiner and he's got an investigator that works under him and they pay them by the calls. If they go out on a call, then that's how they get paid. That's one of the things that Dr. Ruland had said when he handed this over was he said it needs to be a paid position, but uh, as long as we got the ambulance service working, we might well use them. So. But they have to work under a doctor. Yeah, I make a right. motion that we that. appoint <laughs> Dr. Thomas on an interim basis since he's agreed to take that. 
until we can find somebody. Well, he didn't agree to be the medical examiner. <laughs> well, what's he going to do to sign death He said he'd work with us to make sure the death certificate was signed. Well, then who's going to bear a medical Well, we don't we'll have, one. Well, we we'll have one. We'll have one until June. We'll, we'll stay in the point one for yeah. us until we can find one. That's right. Until we can go. <clears throat> oh, then that'll cost us. Yeah, I would say we need a point one by June. <laughs> Yeah. We can't. Oh. The board of doctors in the county's got to recommend him. And Dr. Recommend Ruben, him too. he's recommended his too. He's done that. And right as of right now, neither one of those two are willing to take it. But before June, we may be able to. It says here there has to be a convention of physicians. Well, we, we, can, uh, we can see if we can get them together, but that'll cost us, like Kevin said. What if the county didn't have any physicians? Then the state will the appoint you. The state will appoint you one. And then we'll pay you. Okay. Are they not wanting to take it because they don't want to go out? Is that the deal, or really, I don't. They just have reservations about taking on anymore. Both of them are young doctors with a family they're raising. They don't want to, you know, they're already doing medical medical practices right. and ER rotations, yeah. and they don't have time to just stop everything in the middle don't of the night. Don't be in law enforcement either. I right. tell you. What do you think that any? And Kevin, this you too. Do you think anybody in, on the ambulance service would be willing to go to St. Louis and take the training to become think, the investigator? I think if we were going to do that and that it would need to be one off each shift. Yeah, maybe right. That's shift, what he had said. Yeah. Maybe the yeah. shift supervisor or maybe not. Maybe right. a volunteer. It needs right. to be a paramedic. Yeah. Uh, and we could pay them, you know, I mean, well, I mean, every time they got a call to go out, we go they pay them the $50 again. extra every well, time they had to go out. out. If they're already there, they'll, 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 they'll be on no, yeah, they're already working. More money yeah, they're already they're working. Yeah. They're already there. We're going to send them to go to St. Louis. I mean, that's their, yeah. I, I'm not going to, y'all do what you want to do. I'm not going to get into that because that would involve And I think it's like a week's training in St. Louis. And and they said in Matt Memo, Mr. Pelham told me that he thought the cost per person was like $1,200. For the class, three shifts. We got a motion on the table. We really don't. Well, no, my motion was mute because I missed something. I guess that's what I'm looking for. Move, move, move. I'm sorry. Not mute. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Don't really still June first. I misinterpreted what Todd said. So, I withdraw my motion. Could you find out how much it costs and everything else for that Missouri and how how much time it takes? I can. But, and I'll just bring you the prices. I'm not going to make any recommendations. Sure. Okay. That's all we wanted you information. Okay. I'll do Facts. That. Okay. There's, there's a, a point of business here that we have forgot about. And I was reminded today because we have asked to put on a, a, a referendum uh, for a one cent sale tax. And there's been no paperwork sent to uh, Mr. Dobson by our county attorney, evidently. And it's coming up to a deadline, or else he won't be able to do it. Isn't there another? There's another resolution that's supposed to be on their referendum, Sunday and that's on your Sunday beer. It's been over a year since that was passed. Right, yeah. So you got a deadline of a couple he was days here from last now. Last month, he's not here tonight. No, he said he wouldn't be here tonight. <laughs> What do y'all suggest? Why has it not been put on there? Yeah. Why is it not? I mean, why has it not? You know, we, we voted on it. It was gave to him, and you know that's his job. The beer vote was put in the motion that it was to be put on yeah. the August ballot for the next county yeah, election. Yeah, general election. Why is it, that day? Yes. Why does it not get put on the ballot? Why? Who's not doing their job? Uh, from what I understand, the county attorney ain't sent the paperwork. It has to be wrote up for some way. Right. <laughs> Why I make a motion we direct the county attorney to make sure their sales tax referendum and Sunday beer sale referendum be sent to the county election administrator to be put on the ballot. Well, let's just, let's won't we just cut to the chase if you're going to do that. Should we direct the county executive to get the county attorney to do it? I withdraw my motion. <laughs> Mr. Bush. <laughs> Mr. Bush says to, uh, author, to authorize the county executive to go to the county attorney to make sure that these two referendums of Sunday beer sales and one cent sales tax is put on the August ballot for general election. And somebody call Mike tomorrow because he left. All right, we got a motion. We get a second. We got a I'll second say. by Russell Reed, and that is to contact the, uh, to to have the county executive contact the county attorney to, to make sure that these two I'll issues are on the election vote. We still had to put them together. Vote. No oh, idea. Get out of here. Well, <laughs> you <think> somebody else. <laughs> we should separate. Uh, we should separate them. 
It's not going to be in August, is it? It would be on November, wouldn't it? No, no, it'd be, it'd August. be August. Because yeah. okay, that's county election. County, county, county election. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Do we need several ATs to vote on both of them? I will call uh, uh, no. Stanley Dobson tomorrow and find out exactly the last minute that we can have these in. Benji. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. No, just all in favor of should be. Yeah, there's no money involved here. Okay. All in favor. Uh, yeah. Those opposed. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Got one one post. Yeah, I think gonna have my mom on me about Sunday beer sales. <laughs> hey, we're leaving, it up, the the hey, we're leaving it up to the people. Hey, we're leaving it up to the people. Okay. Is there any more business that, that you had, Mark? Yes, I do. The sheriff is still here at nine o'clock. He called me this afternoon, said he had a I think you Daryl, have you given everybody one of these? Okay. They bought a uh, fingerprint machine and the city Woodbury is uh, paying for half of it. That's the 4792. You see there law enforcement equipment on it. Increase on one side, decrease on the other side. Uh, they got some toll bills in here from the from impound lot, uh, that's uh, 225, I think. And then they got a refund from the uh, Tennessee State for the handgun background permits. Uh, the county gets five dollars every time every time Darrell signs for a, a handgun permit. We get five dollars back, and it it needs to be put in his uh, budget also. That's the the 195, I think. And I make a motion that we amend the sheriff's budget to put this city of Woodbury in there. And, and this is something that we do not have to even come up with the money with because he's already taken no, care of it exactly from one right. to there. So it should be allowed to go. So Mark had made a motion. I'll Russell second. had seconded. And if you'd call the roll. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Now, do you have something from Debbie Moore? I do. Uh, when she was here two months ago, you remember. Right. And, and so uh, she didn't realize everything about she has got she's done what we told her to do. She's requesting a budget amendment of nine thousand two hundred dollars to come from this special account, you know, that's only for uh, doing those things. The, she says here the office personnel have back scanned 276 books to get back to 1939. They're on legal size pages, but these older books past 1939 are larger and will not fit into the scanner. Therefore, they've got to have somebody else to, to get these records uh, restored right. or kept. They've got an estimate of $150 per book <clears throat> from this man from Crosby, Tennessee to scan them. That would be $4,950, but she sampled his work and they do not look. Uh, we have a sampling of documents from this microfilm done and they look very good. However, a sampling from the older books did not turn out as well, see, because they're bigger and, and older and more yellow. Therefore, we obtained an estimate of $250 a book from this man from Dixon, Tennessee, with another company to scan them directly from the older books, you see, instead of. Uh, doing a from the microfilm and that will get us back to the year of 1854 and it will still leave six thousand dollars in her account and she's been working on this now you see for two months now or more and she came to us and she's done this back work because we asked her to get two bids so she has recommended a budget amendment of ninety two hundred dollars to come from that account to do that let me say this she saved four hundred dollars by doing what we asked her to do but she also enough money was saved by her doing that everything she's got now will be scanned right. everything okay. so just so by her doing that paperwork legwork it's got it's, us doing all the books and saving us four hundred dollars too 
So it's almost a no-brainer. And, and, and she had offered there. There'll be still six thousand dollars. Know, they would have been fifty-six hundred, but now there's six thousand right. dollars left in the account. But and see, the thing is that, that uh, uh, she that generates that money herself. No, well, no, 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 no. The people that do business in an office generate that money. Now they, they pay well, a fee. It's a two-dollar fee. Right? I understand <laughs> that, but what I mean is it's not coming from no, it's not coming from county money. money. It's yeah. not coming from property taxes. All right, we have so a motion. I, I make a motion that we accept. Uh, of the register of deeds no. recommendation here. I second. Who is that? Jim? Jim. We have a first uh, and a second. Call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Did you say yes? Yes. Good. <laughs> I didn't have anything to do with beer. Uh -huh. I would like to say something else. Glenn Higgins could not be here at 5 o'clock, correct? He yes. called me and said he couldn't be here at 5 o'clock. No one had called me at all and said they had anything to come before the budget committee until Daryl called me. And, and Kevin called me. I've got my phone right here. Kevin called me at 1151 this morning. I wish you'd have called me. He said you couldn't have been here. And, uh, and, and the last well, time we had a budget late. meeting, we did a hard Really and truly, because we, you know, was, talk, right? yep. you know, we didn't have a quorum. So since nobody had called me and said they got something coming forward, I didn't think that it was necessary to call a budget committee meeting. So we, I told I told uh, Tony when he called me. Tony called me. I said, "No, we're not going to have one because nobody's got anything to start before." But then today, Daryl called me, and Daryl apologized as soon as he called me. He said, "I'm sorry, it's late, but I've just now got this in, and I think that's perfectly all right for me." And Daryl to explain to the whole commission what this was with the city of Red. Don't y'all agree with that? For a small thing like that, it doesn't have to have a these right. other citizens to come in an hour beforehand if it's not necessary. If it's not necessary. That's right. I just want to make sure that that we're that if we say something, that it's gonna it's gonna be held consistent each time. Well I would like to say if we're gonna have a budget meetings that they move be moved to the day before. Or well, prior that to makes the two trips, but let's may have a meeting at seven o'clock. Could you be here at six? Well, that's where you fall. That's where you fall. That's where Jim yeah, falls. Well, get out of here, Glenn. Eight o'clock. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, what what have you decided? Next month, just give me more notice if you can. And well, if okay, you can, well, it's going to be yeah, Saturday next month, I believe, sure. right? Yeah, it'll be yeah, Saturday next month. Right it'll right be easy 14. next month. We'll meet here at 9 o'clock next month, and that will be our quarterly meeting. And that may be the meeting that we need to always have a budget committee before, is the quarterly meeting, which is easier, you see. That you're going to automatically, automatically have. Automatically on the quarterly, on the quarterly. But the others, if necessary. Okay, I'll contact you. If anybody contacts me, it, yeah, I didn't because <laughs> the last thing I heard from y'all was, no, we might as well just show up at 5 o'clock every time. Now, we have one more thing. Does anybody else have anything? No. no. I have one more order of business. Uh -huh. I talked with Jackie Francis of the Industrial Development Board in Canning County, which he is currently the chairman. And I talked to him about Doug Bouldry wanting to be on that committee and told him about his background, and he was all for it. So I want to... I, I would like to appoint, have us appoint Doug Bouldry onto the Industrial uh, Development Board. And I don't know how to do that as far as being the county, the chairman. Would somebody make that motion? I'll make it. Thank you. Second. Got a second. All in favor. All, All in favor. favor. Aye. 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 Those opposed? No. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Anybody <laughs> make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Oh, God. Let's move. I feel like I've been around the world. I appreciate you coming in. Huh? They're having a memory in it. Yeah, it's still going. Three hours and ten minutes is still counting. <laughs>